Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. You're on my Rip Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-BUCK. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights world champion dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. You're listening to Elmira River Sharks Hockey. Now back to John Clement in the arena. Hello and welcome in here live as your Elmira River Sharks get set for a huge game against the Watertown Wolves. The River Sharks set, get set to face the Wolves for the 12th time here in the 2023-2024 FPHL regular season on Hockey for All Night. Elmira has gotten the better of Watertown quite a bit as the Sharks have captured seven of the 11 games that have been played. The home team has also had the advantage in the set, in the set where the visitors have gone four and seven in the opposition's bar so far. With Elmira clinging to the final playoff spot with a 10-point advantage, this matchup is even more critical. A huge win last night for the River Sharks as they took it to the Binghamton Black Bears. A big victory, 6-3. Goals from Dumas, Gaeta, Pozar, Parker, Davidson, and Elijah Wilson as Sammy Bernard stood tall in the crease. And again, a huge night for the man behind the defense, really. Sammy Bernard, 34 shots. That means... Over two games, he has had 85 shots on goal. So, Bernard, will he be turned to again tonight? Will they turn to Frankie McClendon, who's looking for some retribution? He had a rough first outing in a River Shark uniform. I don't know. We'll have to see how things shake out. Uh, the looks of the warm-up pregame skate, looking like it's probably going to be Sammy Bernard back between the pipes, but we will wait to see. Now, tonight, again, game 12 of a 15-game season series on the 2023-2024 FPHL calendar. The River Sharks come in looking to ride momentum after that big W last night. And, of course, Watertown, they come off a night off. So after not playing last night, not really providing any defense uh, against Elmira's ability to take a bigger lead, Watertown's going to be trying to find a way to get back into the playoff picture. They have coughed up the lead to the River Sharks, and now they need to find a way to get things going if Watertown's going to find a way to rebound and put themselves back in the playoff picture. Elmira's got a great chance here to put themselves up 13 points with 13 games remaining. If they can come out and make an impact right away, it's going to be very difficult for Watertown to find a way back into this. And even with three games left to go in this season series, the bigger problem, however, for the River Sharks, they get a little complacent. You can't allow yourself to do that. And head coach Tyler Jurich, we'll talk to him in just a second here on Coach's Corner. He thinks that some of these new additions are going to help with that. Dustin Gisseau showed in a big way over the last three games that he's been a part of. Obviously, wasn't a part of that Watertown win last Sunday, 7 p.m. start. Uh, in Watertown, you know, it's one of those situations where you would have loved to see what Gisseau could have added. In 10 games this season, Gisseau has 10 points. He's a point-a-game player. However, tonight also added to the lineup, I brought it up last night, Ryan Magic Marker joins the River Sharks on a celebrity contract. He last played here in Elmira last season with the Elmira Mammoth, but three years ago he was here taking part with the Elmira Enforcers in the season series that clinched them a spot in the Ignite Cup Finals. That was a big night for the River, or excuse me, for the Enforcers at the time. They needed to find a way into that final series. Marker was a big part of that first line that helped him get there. So definitely somebody to keep an eye on as he's going to take his first shift of the season on that celebrity contract. And, uh, you know, one night, you never know what could happen after that. Obviously, getting his first game on the ice this season. But 
I talked to Marker before the game. He has been working with roller hockey students and finding his way around the world in the world of roller hockey. So stay tuned with us in the first intermission. We'll have plenty to talk about there. We're going to send it down now, though, to head coach Tyler Jurich, hear what he has to say about tonight and what to expect from his boys as they try to find a win against the Watertown Wolves. Down here for another edition of Coach's Corner with head coach Tyler Jurich. Coach, obviously a huge win last night, and now tonight you guys facing Watertown, a chance to extend your lead in the playoffs. What are you saying to the guys before today's game? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge game. Obviously, we knew last night was a huge game, but the situation we're in, every game's huge. So this is this is the next game up, biggest game this season. Obviously, win tonight, give us some breathing room in the standing. So, you know, we play intense like we did last night. I think we'll be successful. Speaking of intensity, uh, adding a new piece to the roster, Ryan Marker coming in on a one-game celebrity contract. Uh, when you guys bring in players like this, especially guys, you know, alumni from here before, guys you've played with obviously throughout your career, uh, what are you looking for and how are you expecting him to kind of add a spark to the lineup tonight? Yeah, I mean, we obviously know for the guys you know, he's an absolutely fantastic goal scorer, great player, can just take over games and has many of times in his career. So, um, you know, he's a guy that we wanted the whole season, didn't work out due to his own personal things he has going on, um, but he wanted to help us out, so it would be nice to have him. Well, knowing that we're coming up on a, an important part of the stretch of the season where you know you're going to see Watertown another three times after tonight, uh, every game against them obviously being below you in the standings, how important are these games? Yeah, no, they're they're huge. Um, playing each other three more times, and they're, they're six-point games. Um, you know, So, you know, win the night, we're 13 points up, and, um, you know, it's a like I said, we, we set a goal really every day as a team, which is, um, I think, why we're moving in the right direction. So this is uh, another one on the on the schedule that we look forward to. And speaking of the schedule and, and kind of things going your way, Sammy Bernard, again, absolutely great last night, uh, really stood up to that Binghamton high-impact offense that they've had all season long um, and really didn't surrender much until the third period there. Um, when you look at that and getting that type of uh, effort from your goaltending, how does that kind of help during the playoff stretch? Yeah, I think uh, everybody's extremely confident with Sammy and that, and he obviously, um, you know, is, is in a nice rhythm, and he's, he battles every day, not just during the games, to, to help this team win. So you, you can't thank him enough for, for his effort, and it's, it's great to see him. Uh, moving forward, we, we just we love having him. Well, a week ago, we were able to come through successfully on the power play against Watertown, uh, something you guys weren't able to do with a five-on-three last night, although penalties were fairly scarce last night, which is kind of unusual for this level. Very. Um, but that being said, what do you have to do to execute here tonight? Yeah, um, our power play just, it's not its not where we want it to be. It's, it's pretty obvious, 19% just is not going to get it done. And special teams in the playoffs is extremely important. Penalty kill has been spectacular. Power play's got to get better, so they're just going to have to simplify it and be more urgent and, and move the puck better to be successful. But it's going to come with chemistry. You know, once we have Cameron Yardwood more often um, and, and Powell, kind of everybody remembering how to play with each other, I think, in the stretch run, they'll, be, they'll figure it out. Speaking of which, and we haven't touched on this too much, Dustin Jusseau just coming in. He made a big impact in the Danbury games, had his one-game suspension against Watertown last week, came back and played a big part in the game up until the last nine minutes of the game last night. Um, when you look at a player like that, you played with him in, in past seasons, and what were you expecting out of him, and has he delivered for you? I mean, the most I remember playing against him, he's an extremely difficult player to play against. And then obviously, having him on your team, he's a game changer. It's obvious all eyes are on him when he has the puck, which ultimately makes the rest of the team better. So it's um, just fantastic to have him here. And when you talk about having a guy like that on your lineup, uh, you guys have been able to add and add uh, as time has gone on here getting an ability to keep things moving. You've gotten guys like Stephen Plank, guys like Davide Gaeta. Uh, how did those players kind of suit what you were looking when you were building this team when you started out the season? Yeah, no, guys like Clink and Gaeta, obviously we got from other teams, younger guys just trying to find their way in this league. And um, I think they, they definitely found, you know, their use and, you know, their skill level and their full ability here, which is it's kind of great to watch them grow, uh, you know, right in front of your eyes. So they've been great. Well, last question before I let you go. It's the playoff time. It's an easy time to get up for for any guy who's played in this level before. Uh, but as we've said a bunch of times, a very young team. What are you looking for the vets to impart? What are you imparting to this very young team about what this time of year actually means? Um, honestly, with this team, you kind of see it in their face how they're going to perform because it is a young team. And 
you know, emotions can get the best of them. So you just got to stay level-headed and um, just play as a team and be intense and compete. That's really all you could ask when we when we work hard and outwork other teams and um, are intense and urgent at all times. We see last night what kind of team we are. So, you know, we just got to be more consistent going on the stretch run. All right, we'll let you get back to it. We'll be back here on the Mixer.com pregame show. Well, as you guys are getting a good look, Frisbee Welding's hot player to watch, number 37, Dominic Dumas. The River Sharks picked up a strong offensive upgrade in Dominic Dumas when a trade with Blue Ridge. After playing 32 games with the Carolina Thunderbirds where he posted 15 points and was a plus three, Dumas had made a huge impact last night against the Binghamton Black Bears. Opening the scoring just 60, 30 seconds into the second period, Dumas got through the open ice and later in the game added an assist. Joining a line with Darius Davidson and Stephen Kling, Dominic's hockey sense and speed has made him a valuable addition as Almira looks to make the playoff push. That makes Dominic Dumas tonight's Frisbee welding hot player to watch. And of course, as we tick it down, the official's about to take to the ice, but now here on the broadcast for the first time, you guys are about to see the look, hockey for all night as the Elmira River Sharks about to take to the ice. And I gotta tell you, these jerseys are fire. I'm even wearing one up here in the broadcast booth. And ladies and gentlemen, I gotta tell you, these are absolutely stunning. Here's the officials taking to the ice and now the Watertown Wolves staff right behind them as they head out and we get ready for the opening puck drop. This is gonna be a big game for the River Sharks, of course. Some of your uh, usual favorites wearing a little bit different numbers as uh, Dustin Jusseau goes back to 22 from number nine as we await that to uh, be taken care of. Ryan Marker here on a celebrity contract. Then of course, Marquise Grant Mentis wearing number 24 here tonight and Kyle Powell wearing number 55 here tonight as well. So gonna be an interesting little stretch as the River Sharks trying to find a way to get things going. And of course, this is going to be a big, big night for Elmira. We'll step aside and be right back with the opening face-off. You're listening to River Sharks Hockey here on Mixler.com. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right, folks, Watertown has taken to the ice, and now it's time for the hype video that will uh, get the first arena roaring. And again, after a great crowd last night, looks like we're going to have a pretty darn good crowd here tonight. We're excited about this. Love to see the excitement as the River Sharks get set and get ready to go. Here it comes. Time to get the first arena on their feet. Head coach Tyler Jurich back behind the bench, as is Stavros Soilis. Soilis, of course, has uh, been dealing with a nagging upper body injury. So he is back behind the bench here tonight. As there's a good look at Schmidt and Swanson, who did battle the last time these two teams met here in the first arena back on Super Bowl Sunday. Just a couple of weeks ago. Hard to believe that that was a couple weeks ago at this point. But again, the River Sharks... 
they have been able to find ways to get things going since that Super Bowl Sunday. That Super Bowl weekend, you heard Tyler Jurich talking about it in the pregame show. That's when the team wanted to find their stride. It's when they were looking to get things going. And I'll tell you what, they have found success doing just that here at the Shark Tank, and now they're going to need to keep it going. And in just a second here, I'm going to turn it over to the in-house PA as we get the introduction for your Elmira River Sharks. And there's a good look at Davide Gaeta, and there's Sammy Bernard. We get set here. It's time to introduce your Elmira River Sharks. Welcome to the ice, your Elmira River Sharks. The starting lineup for your Elmira River Sharks tonight. At forward, number 22, Dustin Jesso. At forward, number 47, Elijah Wilson. On defense, number 55, Kyle Powell. On defense, number 77, Rasmus Esp. And welcome to the ice tonight, Elmira River Sharks fans. The magic man returns, number 16, Ryan Magic Marker. And in goal for your Elmira River Sharks, number one, Sammy Bernard. Well, a great look there as we step aside for the National Anthem. Your River Sharks set to take on the Watertown Wolves as we come back here live on YouTube and on Mixler.com. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Your Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-BUCK. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights world champion dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge, while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and SureSmile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. All right, hello and welcome back in here. Hockey for all night as Sammy Bernard right there in the net. 12 and 11, 359 goals against and a 909 save percentage. 
Down at the other end of the ice, Eloy Bouchard going back between the pipes. 6-9-1, and one, 403 goals against a 9.05 save percentage. I have 9.05. They have 9.08. All right, we'll go with 9.08. 9.08 save percentage as the River Sharks have to compete with a goaltender who does have a shutout. Both of their goaltenders have shutouts, including former River Shark Spencer Kozlowski. The River Sharks tonight in those black jerseys with the multicolored numbers will skate right to left across your YouTube screen. The Wolves in those gray gradient jerseys left to right. Puck won back by Watertown, and they'll hustle that puck ahead. Dumped back in as Rasmus Asp chasing it down. Asp there for it. Moves it ahead. Goes right through Marker's legs. Couldn't control as it's taken back by Yvonne Sergeev. Passed across. Watertown trying to set it up. Penn send that one right into the River Shark zone. Asp there for it. Fakes a quick slapper around the boards. Decides better, but now he'll send it up towards Ryan Marker. Sent across. Kyle Powell hustles out. Powell alone. Trying to put it through some legs and can't. Now he gets it ahead. Moved ahead, just so, with a shot over the top of the net. Ramped up, Powell able to keep that puck down. Avoids a check, keeps it in the zone, and sends it back down low. With the puck, Almira back to Jusso in the slot. Jusso turns, fires off the post, back again, a shot, and deflected up again. Back behind the net, right back on the side of it. Picked off now, wraparound shot, can't get it to go. Back out again, looking back to Wilson, shot, deflected into the corner. Almira, a couple of great chances here to start this one off. Back again, as it's been sent around the boards, trying to push it across. Jesso couldn't get there, and Watertown will resume possession. A couple of great opportunities for Elmira here in the first minute. Trying to push it back. Wrap back behind. Watertown looking up ice. Trying to hustle it up. It's back in the offensive zone. A little drop pass for Mike Mercurio. A shot off a leg pad there. Excellent work by Pozar, who has not been afraid to put his body in front of pucks. Back behind. Dumas with it. Tonight's hot player to watch. Has that puck deflected up and out of play? 18.38 to go here, period number one. As again... So, face off. We'll come back to the left hand side of Sammy Bernard. Long look here as Trevor Lord set to take the draw. He and Dumas coming together. Dumas wins it back. Pozar off of the boards and around. Back to the point. Sergeev, some trouble controlling. Now he pushes it ahead and it's picked off. Dumas into the zone. He's got Clink. Clink gets tied up and held onto. Kept in the zone. Penalty towards the front as that one was deflected, just missed the empty net. Over the top of the netminder, still battling his Dumas. He's tied up against the wall. A delayed penalty coming as Almira, with the numbers advantage, could not take advantage, and a hooking call is made. Almira will get the first man advantage of the evening. 18-15 to go here, period number one. Heading to the penalty box, going to be number 29, Tate Leeson. One-time Almira alum, played here with the Mammoth a year ago. As again, face off, off to the right hand side, of, no, excuse me, left hand side of Bouchard. As Newman, Clink, Davidson, Powell, and Jasso out there on this one. A long look. As Clink waiting. They get set for the puck drop. That one's down, one back. Jasso with it. Jasso looking around. Throws it across, picked off, and that'll be hustled out the other way. Back in, Watertown on the break, waiting, deking, shooting, can't get it off. Excellent work there by Carter Thornton. But again, Elmira trapped in their own zone, well on a man advantage, trying to move that puck out of the zone. Picked off and moved ahead, no penalty on that. Elmira three on two back the other way. Into the zone it goes, passed across, Newman shot, just missed the top of the corner there. Back again, move back down low. Clink has it, he circles back. A delayed penalty coming, shot towards the net, as that'll be blown dead. They're going to take them both. So it'll be four on three as Mercurio goes. Mercurio is going to go to the box here. A minute 23 still to go in the advantage. And Darius Davidson. So Davidson gets two for embellishment. And Mercurio gets two for a cross check. And I think they're saying it's still going to be five on four. So, yeah, five on four. No, it is going to be four on three. Okay. No, now they're saying five on four. Uh, <laughs> they're not making up their mind here. So, there we go. <laughs> five on four hockey, as those will be uh, coincidental minors. Ryan Marker out here to take the draw. So Marker waits, puck is dropped, one back, Jusso with it now. 
Dustin Gisseau pinching in. Comes down low. Looking towards the front. Newman taken down in front of the net. Marker will pick up the puck. Marker, top of the circle. Getting harassed there by Black. Puck, puck tip back to the point. Looking for a lane. Powell with it again. He passes down low. Marker back to Gisseau. Gisseau passes down to Marker again. Marker looking ahead. Decides to fire it, and that'll be covered up by Bouchard. Easy save there. 57 seconds left to go on the man advantage. Almira with the advantage here. 4 nothing in the shots on goal. Watertown had a breakaway on this shorthanded opportunity, but Almira able to avoid them even getting a shot off. 17-12 to go, period number one. As Marker looking to win a faceoff. Marker gets set. Puck is down, one back. All the way to the neutral zone. Kyle Powell has to turn and chase. Powell back for it. Looking up ice. Powell taking his time. Takes it down below the goal line. Look up the ice. Passes ahead. Dustin Gisseau hustling it ahead. Gisseau into the zone. Trying to get a lane. Turns it around. Looks back towards the point. Keeps it himself. Now he'll drop off to Steven Klink. Klink back down. Back down to the hash marks. It's Klink again. Klink and Gisseau swap, spot, swap spots. Excuse me. Back. Dustin Gisseau with it now. Gisseau back. Looking. Passes off into the corner. Back again. Powell has it. Fires through. Deflected just wide. Gisseau. Keeps that puck moving. He's pinned to the boards now. And Watertown going to get a clean clear. Back out the other way with 12 seconds to go on the man advantage. Passed across towards the front. Broken up. Excellent work, Stephen Klink. Klink gets ahead. Penalty about to come to an end as Klink still cutting through the neutral zone. Klink into the zone onside. Gisseau dumping that puck down. Marker couldn't control. He gets it now. Back behind to Peavy. Peavy out into the slot. Nobody there for it. As the power play comes to an end, Watertown rushing back the other way. It's Leeson fresh out of the box, looking, deking shot, and it's in the back of the net. Tate Leeson able to score on the first shot of the game for the Watertown Wolves. 16.03 to go in period one, and Watertown has the 1 0 lead. So, faceoff going to come back to center ice. As the River Sharks. Go back to work. Davidson and Mercurio both should be out of the box here shortly. As Parker, Peavy out here up front. As that one blown dead immediately, pushing back Parker and Tate Leeson. Leeson, the goal scorer for Watertown so far. Puck is dropped, one back by the Wolves. Back to get it goes Yvonne Sergeev. Sergeev looking ahead. Fires that through the neutral zone. That goes all the way down. Should be icing and will be. So Elmira will get an offensive zone draw. 15.54 to go, period number one. A 1-0 Watertown Wolves lead. As right now, Elmira, I thought, had the better part of that first almost four minutes of play, but all it took was one breakaway. And now Elmira chasing a lead. Back behind, Peavy ties up his man. Back to the slot, shot by Wilson over the top. Wilson trying to chase it back down as Tate Leeson moves it quickly back to center ice. Gamzatov hustling it ahead. Gets around the defense, thrown towards the net, goes wide and rolls all the way back to the blue line, unable to keep. Leeson gonna circle back. Tate Leeson has it. Looking for a lane, moves it ahead. Leeson into the zone, stick lifted, picked off. And now Rasmus Asp will turn back behind his own net. Asp looking up ice, harassed and taken down, no penalty called. Gamzatov, shot, goes wide of the net. Back towards Tate Leeson. Leeson has that puck pushed aside as Asp takes him back to the neutral zone. Puck flipped back ahead. Lord into the zone. He's rubbed off. Puck sent to the sideboards and again chasing after it. As one more time, the River Sharks will get a penalty here and not going to like that as again, Elijah Wilson talking with the official I didn't see what the call was, so we'll wait for it to be announced, but now it's gonna be a Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill. Your River Sharks will be down a man. 15.09 to go, and Watertown with the man advantage. Waiting for the puck to be dropped. They get set, puck one back, and Watertown takes possession. Trying to work it around up top. Dabari sends it back down low. Back to Dabari. of the Elmira River Sharks. Elijah Wilson, two minutes Puck for poke checked away, taken away by Bernard. Of the first period. So interference was the call. Again, Watertown's Tomasi moves it back down low. 
Moving it there is Thornton. Thornton, who had a breakaway a little bit earlier, still with possession, looking out towards the front. Pass back to the point. Opportunity here, coming, shot, blockered away. Excellent work there by Sammy Bernard. Thornton picks it up. Thornton trying to move it along. Keeps possession, fires, and that one's knocked off a leg. Picked off by the River Sharks and dumped 200 feet. So just 45 seconds here into the kill. Almira still a long ways to go. Thornton will make a quick change as Trevor Lord comes over the boards. Lord, who was able to score last Sunday. Gamzatov hustling it ahead right up to Trevor Lord. Lord and Mercurio in on side, fired towards the net, deflected. And that puck will be bounced to the sideboard, slapped ahead and back out of the zone. Trying to keep it was Graysby, could not. Back behind, back to Graysby again. Graysby with a long look, fires it back to the neutral zone. It's Mike Mercurio. Mercurio throws that puck ahead to Trevor Lord. Lord into the zone, looking, takes it down to the hash marks, back to Mercurio at the point. Mercurio worked around the outside. Takes it down to the goal line now as he looks back. Tate Leeson back towards the point now. Leeson trying to get to the slot. Drops a pass there for Graysby. Back down low towards the slot shot. Save Sammy Bernard. Trevor Lord right out in front was denied by the big netminder. 33 seconds to go in the Elijah Wilson minor, and that'll take us to the media timeout. 13.42 left to go here, period number one. We'll step aside and be right back after this. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Your Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-5. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, we're back here, hockey for all night. And so far, the only people to get the hockey going have been the Watertown Wolves. A goal from Tate Leeson is the difference right now. One nothing Watertown as Elmira trying to get things rocking and rolling. They started off the period very well. Had a four nothing shot advantage, which has now been tied. As that puck won to the slot, towards the middle, Trevor Lord with a shot, covered up by Sammy Bernard again as Lord has been snake bit a little bit here. Almira will make a quick change defensively, it looks like, as Merkel and Pozar head out. So Powell and Rogers off, and now Peavy comes back. Peavy waiting. Puck is dropped, Peavy ties his man up, but it's one back again by Watertown regardless. Worked along the sideboards, Mercurio comes up with it. Mercurio back behind, looking for a lane. Passes that along to Tate Leeson. Leeson back to the point, power play almost over. Last 15 seconds, as that one sent up and into the crowd. So, 14 seconds to go on the kill for Elijah Wilson as he continues to sit in the bench, box. I don't know why I went between bench and box there, but again, a chance here for Almira. They would love to get this one killed off. Long look here as Klink tries to tie up his man. That puck flipped ahead. Back, Pozar swats it in, gets it out. Now Steven Klink on the chase. Eloy Bouchard leaves his net. Leeson heading back. Klink will circle back, and now Darius Davidson encroaches. Back to center ice. Moved ahead by Mike Mercurio. Elijah Wilson is free. Mercurio turning, looking right towards the slot. Broken up right back to Mercurio. Sent back towards the middle. Pops back to the blue line. And that'll be kept by Watertown towards the net. Deflected around and just misses the side of the net. Graysby sends it down low again. Picked off. Almira trying to chop it and can't. Thornton keeps it moving down. Back below the goal line. There to get it is Merkel. Sends it back up the sideboards. Therefore, it goes Steven Klink. Klink wrapped it around the boards, but nobody there. As Watertown able to take back possession. Merkel trying to lay the body. Could not. Poke check back away. Back behind the net. Sent to the side shot and saved. Huge stop as Sammy Bernard comes up big on Tomasi. A little bit too much going on in front of the River Sharks net. Not going to be happy about that. As the faceoff once again will come to the side of Sammy Bernard. Puck drop. 
coming to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. Quick drop here as the referee gets set. Puck is dropped, one to the sideboards. Thornton comes up with it. Thornton harassed quickly, dumped into the corner. Rasmus Ash trying to chase it down. Tomasi gets it back deeper for Jacob Black. Picked off and again chopped right towards the slot, broken up. Newman comes away with it and sends it ahead. Gaeta did not touch, so that will go for icing as Godbout gets back to touch that one up. Puck will come all the way back down. Face off, going to stay deep in the River Shark zone. So after an early push, Almira, a little bit of trouble here. 12 16 remaining. Here in the first period, puck is dropped back. Almira will win that puck as Rasmus Ash trying to play it around, sends it ahead for Newman. Newman is tied up. Gingrich was able to come away with the puck. Big hit there as the River Sharks getting physical. Back down low, River Sharks player down. Newman trying to get ahead, it's Asp who's down. Asp finally back to his skates and that'll be covered up. So an offensive zone draw, Asp back down as he needs to be taken care of. Medical heading right out onto the ice. Asp clutching at something, he got back to his feet, but he's back down now. See what's wrong as medical staff heading out. Rasmus went down hard. And again, you hope he's okay. Obvious concern from his teammates. As now again, the River Sharks assistant captain being looked at. He's up to a knee, trying to help him off. We'll see if, I believe, he's gonna go right for the room. So Rasmus Asp heading for the locker room. Merkel going to help out Asp, as is Parker. He cannot put weight on the left-hand side. As Asp gets taken off the ice, Dr. Gus and his staff there with him, as they will help him back to the locker room. He is not putting any weight on that left, hand, left foot. So we'll see. That is a big minus for the River Sharks as they lose a solid defenseman and an assistant captain. As Almira has some work to do here. A lot of conversation here with the Watertown Wolves bench. As the faceoff coming back down to the right hand side of the netminder. Puck is dropped. Almira gets tied up and can't do anything with it. As Sergeev comes out with it. A little bit of a nothing pass there. Goes up to Pavlov. Pavlov harassed by Brett Parker. Drop back off again. Back behind. Trying to play it up, Watertown looking up ice. Fired along as that'll be moved out. Yvonne Sergeev into the zone looking, firing off a leg pad. And now Pozar swatting at it, gets that puck around. Back for it, Elijah Wilson moved back along. Marker couldn't control. That one will be picked off by Wilson again. Banked off the boards and that one will get out of the zone and will have the distance as that will be an icing. So, puck comes all the way back down. Wilson, Marker, and Parker. Trying to get things going. Trapped back in their own zone. See if Elmira can find a way to get that puck back down to the other end. 11.22 to go, 1-0. Watertown lead. Shots on goal now favoring the Wolves, 6-4. As the official over there talking to the River Shark bench. And we are set. Puck dropped to the right-hand side of Sammy Bernard. One back by Watertown, thrown towards the net, turned aside. Went off somebody's leg pad as that one's flipped ahead. Work back out, Brett Parker hustling. He's trying to get around. Works it deeper into the zone. Backhanded shot goes wide into the corner. Kept down there by Elijah Wilson, but taken right back and moved out by Tate Leeson. Leeson throws it ahead, turned around, swatted away. Excellent work by Cody Rogers as that puck sent back below the goal line. Pozar flips it ahead. He's taken off. Brett Parker back for it. Parker harassed by Tate Leeson, sent along to Pozar. Pozar looks up ice, gets it to Elijah Wilson. Wilson dumps it down in the zone and he'll go for a change. Ryan Marker on the chase now as Bouchard wraps that puck around the boards. Right back towards the River Shark bench, has to wait for everybody to get on as that puck's now moved ahead, trying to flip it ahead to Steven Klink. Brought in on sides, Klink can continue to chase. Thornton has it, run into the boards hard by Klink, right out towards the front and can't come up with it. Sergei back behind the net, he's harassed. 
Wraps that one around the boards again. And right back behind that puck fluttering around. Shipped back out off of Tomasi's stick. Played with a high stick. And that puck's shot right back towards the net. And that'll be covered up by Sammy Bernard. So. Faceoff will come back in the River Shark zone. As one more time. Almira. Trapped deep in their own zone. We're almost halfway through the first period of play. 10-16 remaining. Puck is dropped. Amira wins that puck back. Flip back towards center ice. A little look there by Klink. He cheats ahead. Puck moved right back. Darius Davidson shot off a man into the corner. Dominic Dumas trying to chase it back down. Jacob Black sends it back towards the point where it's picked off. Shot towards the net and off the side of it. Almira with it back below the goal line. Fired along. Finds Kyle Powell. Powell looking back towards the middle. As that puck bounces around right towards the front shot. Can't get it to go. Played with a high stick. And they're going to blame Stephen Klink on that one and break it back towards center ice. 9.52 to go. Takes us to the second media timeout of the period. 1-0 Watertown. And the Sharks trying to find their way back. We'll be back after this. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights world champion dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. All right, with that, we are back. The media timeout coming to an end. 9.52 to go, period number one. River Sharks trailing 1-0 to the Watertown Wolves. As now, head coach Tyler Jurich looking. He's got his eyes pointed at the Davidson, Klink, and Dumas line. Dumas had a goal and an assist last night. Would love to find a way to get some of that offense working here. As the puck is dropped, push back ahead into the zone. Klink. Takes a look, but Watertown going to win that puck cleaning. Hemming sent that puck wide. His defensive partner moving that puck back ahead, right back to Hemming. Hemming back again to his defensive partner as they try to set this up. Sent back out to center ice. Trying to hustle it into the zone. Offside is Watertown. And so that puck will come back to center. 9.32 to go in the first period. Still 1-0 Watertown. As again, Dumas set to take the draw. A long look here for Elmira as they try to get everything set. Puck is dropped. Watertown wins that back cleanly. Hemming dumping that puck in. Back to get it goes Sammy Bernard. Bernard sends it along. Back to Darius Davidson trying to settle it down. Move back towards the point but cut off by the Wolves. Watertown keeping the zone trying to work it back down deep. Towards the front picked off there and Kyle Powell will hustle it back out. Off the boards and back to the blue line. Able to get that puck to it but not out. Back behind Sammy Bernard moving it along quickly. Looking up ice, it's flipped ahead, but kept again by Watertown towards the front. Dabari couldn't control as he and Kyle Powell got tied up. Dabari has that puck taken away from him. Back down low, Chase Dabari trying to move it along. It's picked off. Excellent work there by Pozar to put his body in front of it. Back to the point. Sergei with a shot, deflected through and into the corner. As Powell trying to get free, cannot. Two Watertown Wolves come together. And again, big hit there on Pavlov. Puck pushed ahead, trying to move it out. Backhanded play, Darius Davidson into the zone. Cuts around, looking top of the circle, into the slot, tries to drop pass and can't do it. Move back ahead, Watertown will hustle it out as Tate Leeson. Leeson, cutting wide, trying to cut through the zone, still stick handling through, he heads back to the blue line. Leeson, towards the front, broken up towards the sidewall. Stephen Klink swatted at it, couldn't get it, Trevor Lord back down low. Back behind, it's picked off, banked off, and Sammy Bernard will cover it up. 8.18 to go here, period number one, as Almira chasing a little bit too much here. 
So, puck drop off to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. Lord lines up with Jusso. Jusso gets it back, but it's picked off there. Mercurio towards the front shot, backhander towards the net, kept out. Excellent work again by Elmira, able to keep that puck out of the net. Back behind, Gaeta sends it back. Therefore, trying to move it ahead. The play right up into the face. No call coming there. Back out to center ice. Sergeev will go back to get it. And again, all the way back behind, it's kicked ahead. Jusso into the zone. Jusso trying to get around his man. Back towards the front. Jusso still dragging that puck around. Dustin Jusso back to the slot. Turns, fires off a leg pad. Hustled back ahead where it's picked off again by Jusso. Jusso waits. Everyone gets on side. Back to the point. Trying to send it through as Merkel flips it through Mercurio, but Mercurio turns that puck right back around. Tomasi couldn't handle it, and now it'll be turned around by Newman. Newman into the zone, looking. Passes that down for Jusso. Jusso through the middle. Stick was lifted by Gaeta, or on Gaeta. My apologies as Mercurio trying to slap in that puck out to center ice. Gets it to Tomasi. Tomasi flips it down and deep. Back behind. There for it. Passed around again by the River Sharks. Trying to send it back out, but can't quite clear the zone. Tomasi pass across. Shot off of the top of the glass. Bounced back towards the blue line. Unable to handle, and Elmira will hustle it out. Newman ahead to Gaeta. Davide Gaeta into the zone. He's out of gas, has to throw it into the zone and make a change. 6.55 to go, period number one. Trying to rush it back out. Puck, poke checked out there by Marker. Grasby has it, still working it along the lane. Dumped back, and that will get into the stands. So, 6.46 to go here in period one. 6.46 remains in period number one. One-nothing Watertown at the moment. They're calling a timeout for video review, I believe. So we're gonna see. They're having a conversation and I think we're gonna get video review here. We'll wait to see what comes across the monitor. As again, the River Sharks saw this last night, trying to avoid going down two to nothing. Could not tell from my angle. It definitely danced its way through the crease. As now we'll wait. See what the replay shows here. As we wait for the angle to be given. You know this is about the play that Sammy Bernard had moved ahead to try to make the stop. As now again, we wait. You should see the video replay here any moment. You're gonna see it come across your screen. You'll see exactly what the officials are seeing, I believe, once they get this uploaded. Of course, again, part of this is they have to get it over there in the video booth and see what they, uh, what they find up there. Again, here in the first arena, we're fortunate enough to have a few different angles on this. as the Sharks mill about their bench. 6.46 left to go. As one nothing Watertown right now would not be good to see the Wolves gain a secondary goal advantage here. As they wait, conversation happening with the booth to my right hand side. We'll wait to see the official review, how that all shakes down. And the birthday song being played here. <laughs> so we'll wait to see. I'm not sure uh, if they were going to do a birthday announcement, but uh, obviously going to take time with that as they're looking for the video review down at our location just below me. Not a good view of it from your guys' angle, but I've got a fairly decent view. The officials coming together as they're trying to get the official replay to see whether or not that puck crossed the line. And again, as I said before, Elmira lucky to have several various angles, the behind the net camera, the main cameras down to the overhead view, the side view, and of course the center ice camera, many different options. As now again, we should see this here once the officials see it, I believe. 
As there we go now, the screen has gone red, and I'm assuming we're about to see it pop up on your guys' screen right here. So we'll wait to see it right now. Here's the replay. Uh, Sammy Bernard makes a save. It's kept. I do believe that's kept out. We'll see if we can see it again. I mean, regardless, I'm pretty sure we're going to get another look at that, but we'll get one more view on that here, I believe. Here it comes. Okay. So the puck bouncing around. Bernard is taken out of position. And excellent work there. Huge stop by MJ Merkel. Merkel makes the save there with his stick. And that is unbelievable. The official going to come out and waves it off immediately. MJ Merkel gets all the credit in the world for that one. So, emphatic no goal from the official as he headed off. So, big save, MJ Merkel. And again, the Watertown Wolves taking Sammy Bernard out of the, uh, out of the crease on that one too. So, I think Elmira might have had a challenge of their own if that had been... Confirmed a goal, but again, great work by MJ Merkel as the River Sharks win a draw. Sent back ahead, kept at the blue line. Now it bounces out and bouncing back. Marquise Grand Mentis tries to flip that puck ahead. He's throwing that puck forward, gets it in the offensive zone, still battling, can't come up with it. Chopped up, and that'll come out of play. Marker has to wait. And now that they're on side, Godbout sends it a wide over to Sergeev. Sergeev looking up ice. Bounce back again, trying to play this puck along. Watertown has possession. Again, Watertown did score first back on Sunday evening. Sent back ahead. Into the zone come the Wolves. Shot over the top of the net. Bounces all the way around as Pavlov couldn't control. Sergeev backhands that one. Blocker decide that time by Sammy Bernard. Chase Tavari. He's harassed. Trying to move that puck out. Grant Mentis tied up. Flipped ahead. Tavari goes down but gets right back up with the puck. Off a leg. Back to Grant Mentis. Marquise Grant Mentis looking aside. Gets the red line and takes a rough ride for his trouble all the way back down. Peavy trying to chase it back down. Powell, quick turn around. He might have had a shot at that puck. Back the other way, Gamzatov throws it across. Into the zone, Mercurio has it chopped away from him. Marker couldn't settle it down. That'll be moved back out. Trying to play it, hustled back up. Right back to Ryan Marker. Marker, Deeks, waiting, shooting, trying to put it through, and he's taken off. Excellent work there by Ryan Marker. Lord moves it ahead for Leeson. Leeson into the zone, cutting wide, taken away, chopped away. Excellent work by Cody Rogers there as that puck's back below the goal line. Sent out to the sideboards. Back down low, it's Trevor Lord. Lord dumps back off. Back for Leeson, picked off there by Merkel. Backhander back to Trevor Lord, off a leg pad and out of the zone. Quick change coming here. Marker heading for the bench. Grasby looking up ice. Grasby trying to hustle that puck back in. It's turned around by Cody Rogers quickly, banked off the boards. Everybody looking for changes. Back to get it. Sergeev going to get there. And no icing. Steven Klink. The low man deep. 4.50 to go here. Period number one. one nothing Watertown. The Wolves trying to shrink the River Sharks lead with a playoff spot on the line. Hustling back. Lord back to Tomasi. Fire save Sammy Bernard. 4.39 to go. And that should take us and will take us to the final media timeout of the period. We'll be back after this. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. All right, well, face-off going to come back down into the River Shark territory. Good look at the River Sharks bench right there as you're all watching along on YouTube. Again, River Sharks in those specialty jerseys. If you haven't gotten on yet, make sure you do here shortly because the first auction coming to an end is Group 1 
And, well, a lot of bids coming in. Pozar, Parker, Peavy, Grant Mentis, and Merkel all in auction number one. That closes at 7.30 here tonight. So make sure you get your bids in on those jerseys. As, again, puck is dropped, one back, Watertown with it. Sergeev trying to move that puck along. All the way back down low. Trying to play it around is Jacob Black. Black back towards the point. Some trouble, thrown towards the net, deflected, and a big save, Sammy Bernard. As he comes up again. So, face off, once again, we'll stay deep in the River Shark territory. As Elmira trying to find their footing here. Newman set to take the draw this time. Trevor Newman, again, he's been a big part of this River Sharks team since joining it after finishing off his collegiate season. Puck pushed back down. Merkel trying to send it past a man. Does get it up past him. A little bit of a trip up there as now Gisso comes away with it. Dustin Gisso looking up ice. Fires that into the zone, and now Davide Gaeta trying to chase it down. Tomasi misses. Gaeta can't handle it either, and now Tomasi gets it right back. Tomasi out of the zone. Flipped ahead. Pozar has to turn and chase. He'll get it back. Wraps it around for Cody Rogers. Rogers off the boards. Up for Newman. Picked off. And again, sent back towards the point. Thornton comes up with it this time. Off a leg pad. And again, that puck swatted around, but nobody can come up with it. Sergei back down low. Hops the stick of Thornton. Thornton looking back towards the point. Gets it there. Big wind up. Shot just wide. Back for it goes Dustin Gisseau. Gisseau trying to hustle it ahead. Gisseau is tied up. Pushes off his man. Gets in. Still working it into the zone. He's rubbed off a couple of times, and Watertown will get it back. Turning it right back around. Here comes the Wolves with a little bit of speed. Chase Tabari throws it towards the net, covered up by Sammy Bernard. 3.26 to go here, period number one. A period that started with the River Sharks pushing the pace of play. Has reverted a bit here. Have to find a way to get something going. Waiting for the puck drop. It's one back by Elmira. Pozar puts it back behind for Kyle Powell. Powell ahead quickly. Here comes Marker. Marker drops off there. Parker looking. Finds his man back. It's Elijah Wilson. Drops back and Parker loses possession. He's taken off and that's covered up. 3-12 left to go. As Wilson and Parker high five. Ryan Marker out there as well looking for some direction. He goes over and will chat it up with Elijah Wilson. A little bit of contact as... Watertown with a late change despite the home ice for the River Sharks. Long look here as Wilson gets set. Puck is dropped, one back. Powell with it. Powell sidesteps a check, breaks down deeper, puts that off a leg pad, and will dump that puck down towards the net. Trying to play it off, but Eloy Bouchard, an easy cover. 3.04 remaining here in period one. So the River Sharks, another offensive zone draw off to the left hand side of the netminder. Trying to hustle this one up. Wilson over there to take the draw. Elijah Wilson waits. Puck is down, one back to the point. Powell throws it towards the net, deflected just wide, bouncing back towards the blue line. But Watertown gonna be allowed some space. Tate Leeson throwing it ahead. Mike Mercurio into the zone, cutting through, looking for a lane. Mercurio back behind, towards the front, poke checked away, and Elmira will turn it out. Sent ahead, Marker with it. Ryan Marker dumps that one off, turns around, takes a little bit of a chop there. Again, right out there in the neutral zone. Marker chasing that puck down deep now. Marker runs into his man, but Godbout gets it right back. Godbout looking, harassed again by Marker. Mercurio trying to hustle it back out. Avoids Dumas. Back into the zone comes Trevor Lord. Lord looking for a lane, shoves to the front, and that one's broken up. I don't know if Lord even got a shot off there. Trying to poke check it back to center ice. They get it out. Lord turns it around to Graysby. Graysby off of Marker. Mercurio takes possession, just avoiding the too many men call there. Sent back to the side, it's Thornton. Thornton dumping it around. Bernard couldn't play. Powell watches it. Marker was trying to get there as well. He stands up to the puck, moving it back ahead. Marker off the boards, looking for Darius Davidson. Couldn't connect. Graysby will go back to play. Graysby wraps around his own net. Dumps that off for Gingrich. Drops off again. It's Jacob Black. Sent back ahead, trying to get there. Graysby will, picking it off. Davidson, he's taking down with a reverse shoulder. And now Watertown back in the zone. Thornton. Taken away from him by Darius Davidson. Davidson ahead looking for Klink. Klink taken down as Klink trying to get back up, but he can't get the stick out from between his legs. Now he does. Turn back around. Flipped ahead. Graysby with it. Move back ahead. A penalty coming here is going to go against Elmira. Dabari with it. Shot save Bernard, and that will be covered up. And now Klink will be taken for a trip. And now some contact there as Merkel and Leeson. 
coming together. So, Jusso gets an extra shoulder as well. Things getting a little physical here. Clink looking at the referee asking what for. And Watertown trying to get under the skin of the River Sharks. So the Sharks taken back to their bench here. As Schmidt now coming over the boards. Haven't seen much of him. Clink not happy as the referee now opens the penalty box door and has a word with Stephen Clink. So, 126 to go in the period. As Almira needs to kill this off. Head coach Tyler Jurich having a talk with the head official. Now three officials over there talking with head coach Tyler Jurich. Minute 26 to go. We're back on the Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill. Vincenzo's Pizzeria just steps from the first arena as they wait for the puck drop. Puck is dropped, one back. Trying to send it back was Gamzatov. It's wrapped around the boards. Trevor Lord with it back behind the net. Lord harassed by Pozar. Back down low. Forced out wide, Tay Leeson gets it. Leeson back behind, drops it off there for Graysby. Back down low again, Mercurio. Mercurio towards the net, nobody across. That puck will bounce back towards the blue line, but kept again, Graysby with it. Back down to the sideboards, trying to play it off, it's Leeson. Leeson looking, circles the zone. Leeson towards the front, poke checked away from him, goes just wide, shot again, save Sammy Bernard. He comes up with two. Trevor Lord an extra shot too. As again, Elmira playing defensively here, has two on the penalty kill, Leeson back to the point. As whistle is blown, Sammy Bernard had an equipment issue and that'll keep a defensive zone draw 44.3 seconds remaining here in period number one. So, face off. Stays to the left hand side of Sammy Bernard. Trevor Lord set to take the draw. He'll line up. Puck is won back by Peavy. Off the boards, banked back to the neutral zone. Picked off here by Brett Parker. Parker hustling into the offensive zone, trying to get around his man, puts a shot off a glove. And Parker trying to get to his own rebound, could not. Watertown will turn it back around. 30 seconds to go here in the first period. Trevor Lord has it. Trying to fire it through, sends it back to Graysby. Graysby back ahead into the zone. It's Tate Leeson passing it off for Trevor Lord. Lord forced to the outside, wraparound attempt and couldn't get it to go. Swatted at, right back to Lord. Poke checked out of the zone and that'll go all the way back down. 10 seconds remaining here in the first period. Eloy Bouchard leaves it there for Gamzatov. Gamzatov. Looking up ice, last four, three, two, one. Mercurio breaks in and that will do it as the shot was saved. Sammy Bernard, another huge stop. As the Sharks trail one nothing after one. And Merkel with some words for Tate Leeson. She took a couple of liberties there at the end of that period. So, shots on goal in favor of the Watertown Wolves, 12-6. 34 seconds of a kill left to go. Clink heading right over to the tunnel. Long talk with the Watertown coach as everyone headed off the ice. Trevor Lord trying to make his way to the official. And I believe you can hear it from here. Get off the ice. So... All of the officials not taking kindly to the uh, jabber jawing that we saw yesterday. Saw it from both sides. As we sit here, we go to the first intermission again. Watertown one to nothing over the Elmira River Sharks at the moment. Not the way you wanted this period to unfold, but not much you can do about it now. Got to find a way back. Period of the long change coming up as the River Sharks trying to get themselves squared back up here tonight. Almira zero, Watertown one. We'll step aside when we come back. So much to talk about right here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! 
Rocky is back. Your alma River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-5. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the Finn. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights World Champion Dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue, and that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, 
We're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. To continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Down here for another edition of Coach's Corner with head coach Tyler Jurich. Coach, obviously a huge win last night. And now tonight you guys facing Watertown, a chance to extend your lead in the playoffs. What are you saying to the guys before today's game? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a huge game. Obviously, we knew last night was a huge game, but the situation we're in, every game's huge. So this is this is the next game up, biggest game of the season. Obviously, win tonight, give us some breathing room in the standing. So, you know, we play intense like we did last night. I think we'll be successful. Speaking of intensity, uh, adding a new piece to the roster, Ryan Marker coming in on a one-game celebrity contract. Uh, when you guys bring in players like this, especially guys, you know, alumni from here before, guys you played with obviously throughout your career, uh, what are you looking for and how are you expecting him to kind of add a spark to the lineup tonight? Yeah, I mean, we obviously know for the guys you know him as a absolutely fantastic goal scorer, great player, can just take over games and has many of times in his career. So, um, you know, he's a guy that we wanted the whole season, didn't work out due to his own personal things he has going on, um, but he wanted to help us out, so it'll be nice to have him. Well, knowing that we're coming up on a, an important part of the stretch of the season where you know you're going to see Watertown another three times after tonight, uh, every game against them obviously being below you in the standings, how important are these games? Yeah, no, they're they're huge. Um, playing each other three more times, and they're, they're six-point games, um, you know. So, you know, win the night, we're 13 points up, and, um, you know, it's a... Like I said, we, we set a goal really every day as a team, which is, um, I think, why we're moving in the right direction. So this is uh, another one on the on the schedule that we look forward to. And speaking of the schedule and then kind of things going your way, Sammy Bernard, again, absolutely great last night. Uh, really stood up to that Binghamton high-impact offense that they've had all season long um, and really didn't surrender much until the third period there. Um, when you look at that and getting that type of uh, effort from your goaltending, how does that kind of help during the playoff stretch? Yeah, I think uh, everybody's extremely confident with Sammy in that, and he obviously, um, you know, is, is in a nice rhythm, and he's, he battles every day, not just during the games, to, to help this team win. So you, you can't thank him enough for, for his effort, and it's, it's great to see him. Uh, moving forward, we, we just we love having him. Well, a week ago, we were able to come through successfully on the power play against Watertown, uh, something you guys weren't able to do with a five-on-three last night, although penalties were fairly scarce last night, which is kind of unusual for this level. Very. Um, but that being said, what do you have to do to execute here tonight? Yeah, um, our power play just, it's not its not where we want it to be. It's, it's pretty obvious, 19% just is not going to get it done. And special teams in the playoffs is extremely important. Penalty kill has been spectacular. Power play's got to get better, so they're just going to have to simplify it and be more urgent and, and move the puck better to be successful. But it's going to come with chemistry. You know, once we have Cameron Yarwood more often um, and, and Powell, kind of everybody remembering how to play with each other, I think, in the stretch run, they'll, be, they'll figure it out. Speaking of which, and we haven't touched on this too much, Dustin Gisseau just coming in. He made a big impact in the Danbury games, had his one-game suspension against Watertown last week, came back and played a big part in the game up until the last nine minutes of the game last night. Um, when you look at a player like that, you played with him in, in past seasons, and what were you expecting out of him, and has he delivered for you? I mean, the most I remember playing against him, he's an extremely difficult player to play against. And then obviously, having him on your team, he's a game changer. It's obvious all eyes are on him when he has the puck, which ultimately... All right, well, there you heard it from head coach Tyler Jurich, and they're going to be joining me here in just a second here, so we'll uh, get set for that. But, again, a great night here at the Shark Tank as Elmira trying to find their way back into the winning column. Big W last night against the Binghamton Black Bears. And now, of course, tonight, going to be a great time here tonight as the River Sharks kicking off a big night here against the Watertown Wolves on a very special night. Hockey for all night. These beautiful jerseys worn down there on the ice, and don't they look sharp? Beautiful black jerseys going on with the rainbow colors all over them. And again, hockey for all means hockey is for everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us for tonight. Those jerseys available on Dash Auctions. A few jerseys, as you've heard already, going to be available right there on the ice, section 105 after the game. So make sure you hustle on over there, put your bids in. As now we talk about the period, obviously an early start 
turned out not exactly the way the River Sharks were hoping. Four to nothing early on in the first four minutes of the game in the shots on goal. The goals, unfortunately, Tate Leeson on a breakaway. We've seen him time and time again. He is a tough customer. Got to put the body on him and take him down a peg to get the Wolves back where we want him. Power play is really uh, a bit of a difference there. 0 for 2 for the River Sharks, 0 for 3 for the Watertown Wolves. And again, they are going to start the second period with clean ice and a man advantage for a, another about 44 seconds. So going to be a big one there for Sammy Bernard and the River Sharks penalty kill to try to keep that one going. Now, of course, a look at the standings, which is what this game is all about. These guys battling for a playoff spot. Watertown in dead last. Ten points behind your River Sharks after that big win against the Binghamton Black Bears last night. Giving Watertown a 10-24-5 record. Those uh, OT points certainly coming in handy for the Wolves. On the other side for Elmira, 15-25-0. and 0, 49 points. That's a 10-point gap with a potential, if Elmira can come back and win, of making that 13 points. And of course, Elmira chasing down those Danbury hat tricks with 63 points, 16, 16, and four. A lot of games against the hat tricks still to come. So we'll, you never know. Got to get your chances and try to get yourself up in the standings and get yourself into a good position for a playoff push. Now, of course, the second period, the period of the long change, we'll see what the River Sharks can do. But I already talked about the jerseys. Make sure you get on Dash Auctions. Check those out because those are going quickly. And of course, the bidding getting pretty crazy for them. So make sure if you haven't gotten on there, dashapp.io, download Dash Auctions, check out these jerseys. The first one closes in just about a half hour from now and then every 15 minutes after that. So if you don't get a chance to win one here live in section 105, make sure you get yours on Dash Auctions. And don't forget your River Sharks right back here in town at the Shark Tank next Friday night against those same Binghamton Black Bears We've got three big wins against the Black Bears. They've all come right here, and we have to think it has something to do with all of you coming out here and supporting the River Sharks. Get your tickets and Ticketmaster on the Ticketmaster app or by calling the box office, 607-734-PUCK. As we get back to this, we'll send it down. Listen to what Ryan Marker has to say as we get things ready for period number two. You're listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. Ryan, first off, welcome back to Elmira. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm, it's like my second home, so I love being back. Now, Ryan, the last time you were here and I was here at the same time, big three-game weekend, uh, seven-point weekend for you as well as you came out big against the Carolina Thunderbirds and clinched the enforcers a spot in the uh, championship series for the prestigious Ignite Cup. Uh, obviously, the playoff situation was what it was. COVID spread all around. Um, but when you were here playing those games, I mean, how big of a deal was that for you and obviously making your return here tonight after three games last year with the Mammoth as well? Oh, it's it's huge to be back. Um, you know, I love being in Elmira. Anytime I ever get to play here, I make my way down and I get here. I have a lot of friends on the team, a lot of friendships obviously outside of hockey in Elmira, so it's always good to be here. This building is kind of, uh, you know, special here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League was one of the first bigger arenas that really came in. Um, what's it been like playing here? I mean, you played both sides of the benches here. What's it like to play on both sides? So when you're against Elmira, it's, it's rough. You know, the fans hackle you. You know, they, they, you know, they really, you know, let you know that you're here. But when you're, um, when you're on Elmira and when you're on their side, and then they make you feel at home, you know, everyone in the community, you know, talks to you and it's, it's a great atmosphere. Now, obviously, some fans were talking online. They talked about kind of your, uh, your move into retirement. But uh, for, as I understand it, you've been fairly busy over in Europe on the roller, uh, roller hockey circuit, doing some things locally. What's it, uh, what's it been like for you since, uh, since you've been off from the, uh, the FPHL? So, um, so right where I'm from, um, my, um, one of my best friends owns um, a roller hockey rink. And I've been playing there since I was four years old. And that's kind of what I grew up doing even before ice hockey. So that's kind of like, I call it like my first true love of like the, the game of hockey. So I, um, I run clinics every week. I, I play in actually a pro league for roller hockey and I play Team USA like three or four times. So I got to go around the world and like see a bunch of different spots. So it's, I mean, it's definitely been treating me well, but now I have, um, 
Now I have a baby coming in May, so life's going to change even more. Well, congratulations on that. Obviously, a huge step in uh, working towards the family, man. So we'll have to find a new nickname for you. Uh, Magic might have to go to the wayside, and we'll find something family-oriented. Um, but as you come in here, and obviously uh, fans won't see any drop-off there in the uh, the cardio, based on what you're telling me about the amount of time you're spending working on the ice, who are you working with? I mean, you talked about kind of camps. Is it younger kids, or who do you work with? So I work with primarily U16, U18, because um, that's who I coach. So I actually, um, there's this tournament series called State Wars, and like all, every state like gathers like the best players from the state, and I actually coach the U16 and the U18 team. So that's the team I help, I help pick and coach in the summer and stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty much what I do with that. Nice. And now, obviously, you're coming in here against a team, Watertown, just below us in the standings. This is a, a big matchup for you, but obviously you're used to playing in some of those. Um, and obviously, Watertown, a crest you wore for a number of years as well. Uh, what's, uh, what's it like to come back here? I was playing in Elmira, but especially against a team that, again, you wore that crest on your chest. Um, it's great. It's you know, it's great, obviously, playing for Elmira and then playing against Watertown, knowing the history I have with them and how long I played with them. I mean, the lineup's completely different, obviously, from when I played. But, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, be a part of a game where two teams that I played for in the past are, you know, participating. Well, last question before I let you go. Tyler Jurich behind the bench, somebody you've uh, played against a certain number of times over the course of your career and obviously teammates when you're here with the Enforcers. Uh, what uh, What is it like kind of seeing... The next generation kind of moving on. Tyler Jurich, obviously behind the bench. You're moving into a coaching role in your roller hockey side of things. Uh, what's it like to kind of see the torch being passed, if you will? Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. Like I was talking to Jurich about this yesterday about how, like, I was looking at the league and stuff like that, and how crazy different every team's lineup is compared to when we played. And it's like, you know, I'm used to going on there and being like, oh, you know, look who's you know doing well, you know. I barely know anybody anymore, so it's like it's completely different than what I'm used to. But it's cool, though. You know, it's we're in our well thirties to mid, you know, between middle thirties. So it's it's cool seeing the new um the new kids coming up, and I'm looking forward to playing against some of them tonight. Well, I lied. I didn't. I'm gonna ask one more question. I said that was the last one, but we'll give you this one more. Rasmus Asp has become kind of a fan favorite here. You got the chance to see him down there in Delaware. Uh, what is it about his game that has made him such an integral part of this uh, Elmira River Shark lineup? Honestly, he's just he's unbelievable all all around. He's a great all around player, and not only just that, he's a great person too, which means even more. So he's the team loves him. He's great to have in the locker room, and he's going to be a good player for a long time. Love to hear it. All right, well, have fun tonight. Thank you, and welcome back. Ryan Magic Marker will be back on the Intermission Report. All right, well, there you heard it, Ryan Magic Marker. He has been out here a couple of times. See if he can get things going in the right direction with the River Sharks as the Watertown Wolves take to the ice first. Eloy Bouchard heading back for his crease. Period of the long change, the Wolves in those gray sweaters will skate right to left across your YouTube screen and the Elmira River Sharks in those beautiful black jerseys with the rainbow style numbers will skate left to right. Sammy Bernard heads for his crease. As Elmira taking to the ice, waiting to see. Trying to keep a long eye out there. Number 77 has not returned to the ice, so the River Sharks definitely at a bit of a disadvantage not having Rasmus Asp in the lineup right now after that incident back in the first period. The River Sharks going to have to find a way to get things going. 34 seconds. I misspoke in the intermission. It's not 43. It's 34 on Stephen Klink. So Klink back in the penalty box for those 34 seconds. As Elmira trying to get going here. Four on, or five on four, my apologies. As 20 minutes on the clock. The Sharks trying to assemble the lineup they want. Brett Parker back out here with Blake Peavy, Mark Pozar, and Kyle Powell trying to kill off this five on four. So the official looks ready, and we're set to go. 
One to nothing in favor of the Watertown Wolves. One back, it's Kyle Powell with it. Flipping it ahead and all the way back down. Bouchard plays that one and back behind it goes. Trying to play it off again. Watertown looking to set this puck back up as they move it back ahead. Graysby sending it ahead quickly. Back into the offensive zone comes the Wolves. Shot, kick save, Sammy Bernard right back through and unable to hold it. It's passed across and broken back out. Two on one if Peavy hurries. Peavy ahead, trying to flip that through his man. Continues to work that puck back down low. Parker chasing after it. It's moved back along to Graysby. Graysby has that one picked off. Blake Peavy towards the zone, but Clink fresh out of the penalty box. Back behind, Pozar on the chase. Pozar back behind, harassed by Mike Mercurio. Pozar taken down, awkward angle there as trying to move it along as Peavy back up the sideboards. Therefore, it almost too many men as again, Watertown able to get that puck back, banked off the boards. Hustling it back in their own zone, passed across to Yvonne Sergeev. Don't forget all of the scoring on Sunday night happened in the first period. Back in the zone, Tomasi moves it ahead, back to the slot, broken up, shot, save, Sammy Bernard right back through in the slot again, poke checked ahead and trying to move it back out is Steven Klink. Passed across for Davidson. Davidson into the zone, comes across, Klink taken down and he's gonna draw a penalty. Pozar there for it. Pozar turning, looking, shot, saved, turned around and covered up. That will draw the power play. Interference is the call. As a little bit of mouth going off and the official immediately blows the whistle again on that, we'll see. Two minutes for the interference on Godbout and it's a power play opportunity for the River Sharks. River Sharks power play came into the game 19.4%. Watertown's penalty kill 74.6%. So a big opportunity here for Elmira. Clink, Newman, Davidson, Gisso, and Powell. 14 to six, the shots on goal in favor of the Wolves. Steven Clink waits. Puck is dropped, one back, Gisso is there. Gisso comes down around the hash marks. Takes it below the goal line. Gisso all the way back down towards the front shot. Backhander can't get it to go. That puck will be flipped out. Kept there. Excellent stop as Powell keeps the zone looking. Shot off the shoulder. Bounce back along and again Watertown comes up with it. Picked off again by Powell. Moving it through the legs and through Powell's legs. That'll be turned around. Interference on Tate Leeson as Leeson swats at Powell. So Powell's not going to like the call but he's going to be taken to the bench. And that will kill the remaining minute 34. So penalty kill for the Watertown Wolves is over. Powell takes a seat. Faceoff coming back down into the River Sharks defensive zone. Four on four hockey. And we'll see what head coach Tyler Jurich wants to do here. Gisso and Newman stay out. Defensively, it looks like Pozar and Merkel. So, 18-14 to go, a minute 34, a four on four hockey, and then an abbreviated Watertown Wolves power play. Tyler Jurich, letting his thoughts be known on the bench, just so wins that one back. Pozar with it, looks up ice, finds Newman. Newman looking across, as Pozar races up, he dumps that puck down in, and Pozar gonna get to it. Pozar back behind, tries to throw it back, finds just so. Gisso tries to take it around his man, cannot, as Trevor Lord sends it back to his defense, and Graysby sends it back around looking for Trevor Lord. Lord back behind, big hit there on Lord. Gisso quickly back up, trying to get to that puck and can't. Now it's worked back out, thrown ahead. Thornton into the zone. Thornton towards the front, broken up, excellent play again. Sammy Bernard able to force that puck away as Merkel sends it up the sideboards. Pozar is there. Pozar looking through, passes it across. Dustin Gisso moves it ahead into the offensive zone. Gisso cut off and swatted away from him. Now Newman turns to chase. He and Lord going after the same puck. Lord moves it back down below to his defense. 17-20 left to go in period two. Newman trying to use his stick but can't get a hold of that puck. Watertown able to break it out easily. Sent aside. Davari couldn't control. Flip back ahead where Newman has some trouble. Newman turns it around. Newman still working that puck along. Back behind to Cody Rogers. Rogers moves it ahead. Rogers in the offensive zone, avoids a check, drops it back for Newman. Newman waiting, 45 seconds to go here in the penalty to Kyle Powell. Last 14 seconds of the four on four. Pozar trying to hustle it up the far side. Mark Pozar over the blue line, passed across for Steven Klink. He has to try to lift his stick and can't. 
as now he tries to pull it away and again cannot. Now they'll have to get onside. Rogers with it. Godbout is free. Back behind. Last 24 seconds of a penalty kill for Water or, uh, for a power play. Excuse me for Watertown. Clink chasing it back. Bouchard wrapping it around the boards, all the way around. Ryan Marker back for it. Marker passes it across. It's Pozar. Slapping that one ahead. Clink couldn't come up with it. All the way down. Goalie's looking for icing on a power play. <laughs> Clink chasing it back down. Clink pinched to the boards. Two Watertown Wolves in there. Marker trying to get in there. Now the power play has come to an end. Powell is free. Back ahead. Tate Leeson enters the zone. He's got Trevor Lord with him. Swatted away from him. And now Powell banks it off the boards and out. Had an opportunity to play there as that goes all the way back down. Sergeev back to get it. Four minutes gone here in the second. One nothing Wolves. Gingrich trying to kick it along for Leeson. Knocked back down as Roger sends it ahead. It's Marker. Marker into the zone. Passed across. Towards the front. Clink with a shot. Deflected up and over the top of the net. Banked back around. Chasing after it. Can't come up with it as Lord comes up with it. Lord back down low again. Harassed by Clink around the boards. Marker chasing as Mercurio puts it back to the neutral zone. Picked off by Dumas and sent deep in the zone. Clink and Marker need a change. Watertown looks up ice, finds Trevor Lord. Lord, a little backhander out towards center ice, picked off away from Tomasi. Back to the defense, Pozar flipping it back towards the neutral zone. Hustling back is Sergei, passed across to his defensive partner. Off the boards again, looking for Lord. All the way down, this is going to be icing, as with 15-13 to go in period two, the River Sharks get an offensive zone draw. So, face off. We'll go to the... Waiting to see. It looks like it's going to come to the left-hand side of the netminder. Davidson goes off for a change. Newman, Dumas, Gaeta. Rogers and Pozar on the backside. Long look. Puck is dropped. Trying to win it back. It's taken away quickly as Gingrich. Trying to move that puck along. Flips it back up through the neutral zone. Newman able to chop it down. Newman off the boards and back in. Watertown retreats. Picks that puck up behind their own zone. Sergeev, taking his time, fires that puck ahead. Right out to the neutral zone where it's picked up by Cody Rogers. Rogers flips it ahead but can't get control. As that puck's moved back out, Thornton three on one for the Wolves as they hurry back. Newman trying to swat it away. Shot in the back of the net. Too easy for the Wolves and they make it two to nothing. As the numbers advantage just too much for the River Sharks on that one. As I believe that was... Tomasi, and it does look like he will be the first party through the line as now Powell having a conversation with the official at center ice. Not going to get much out of that one apparently as back behind it goes. 2-0 Watertown. So Almira needs to get hungry here. Powell with possession. Looks up ice, banks it off the boards. Chase Tabari able to put a stop on that. It's dumped right back down and now Marker trying to chase that puck down. Back behind as it's banked up the boards. Sent out towards center. Pozar has to go back to play. No icing on that play. Pozar wrapped up there by Pavlov. And Dabari trying to move it along. It's picked off again. Elmira taken down there was Powell. And no call coming on that. Right back towards Sammy Bernard and he will cover up. As Pavlov took that one from his front side. 14-16 to go period two. We'll get a stoppage in play and be right back after this. 2-0 Watertown. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Your Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-5. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, with that, face off. Back to the right-hand side of Sammy Bernard. Bouchard has not barely been tested. 15 to 8, the shot's on goal right now. 
So Elmira trying to get ready for the draw as Jusso set to take it. Jusso wins that one back. It's Kyle Powell with it back behind the net. Powell wraps it around the boards out to center ice. Marker chops it down but can't get possession. Sent back ahead. Sergeev will come up with it. Taken off. Played back behind as Wilson fires it along. Finds Kyle Powell. Powell towards the front. Tipped by Jusso. Shot goal! Dustin Jusso! And he will make it 2-1 River Sharks. Or excuse me, 2-1 Wolves. My apologies. But the River Sharks get one back. Excellent work to not give up on the play. Dustin Gisseau, watch it again here. Quick pass across Powell, throws it towards the net on the deflection, gets it right back and tips it over Eloy Bouchard. 2-1 Watertown, but the River Sharks have some life. Gisseau right back out there, wins that puck back to Powell again. That connection just worked. Powell now one assist away from 300 in his career. As that puck moved back along, Tate Leeson going to get it back. Drops for Mercurio. Mercurio into the zone, looking for a lane. Passed across, Lord shot goal. And Trevor Lord makes it 3-1, Watertown. So the Wolves answer right back. And Elmira goes back to the drawing board, trailing by two yet again. Faceoff coming right back here. Shots on goal, 16 to 10 in favor of the Wolves. Wolves with the 3-1 lead as that one's put through some legs. Davidson trying to push it ahead, he comes up with it. Davidson flips it ahead into the zone, trying to push it back through, but it's taken away. A group of Wolves standing there, picked off by Peavy. Peavy dumps that one off, has to wait. Klink gets onside. Davidson pushes it ahead, now Klink trying to chase it back down. Off the boards, out to Tomasi. Tomasi who's got one here tonight, back behind. As again, trying to chop that puck down, it's Cody Rogers, sidesteps a check. Rogers ahead, finds Steven Klink. Klink into the zone, trying to cut around. Takes it around the backside of the net, looking for help, doesn't get any as that puck's flipped ahead and now hustling back out the other way. It's Thornton. Thornton in, looking shot over the top of the net. Bounces right back. Passed across, picked off, and now Davidson hustles out the other way. Into the zone comes Darius Davidson trying to kick it through and cannot. Dumas has to turn around and pick it up. Dumas dumping that puck down deep, but it's cut off again by Watertown. Flipped off the boards and out. Knocked back down by Cody Rogers. Rogers ahead, four on two for the River Sharks. Rogers into the zone, looking, shooting, deflected and cut off with the glove by Eloy Bouchard. So offensive zone draw for Almira as they try to push the pace of play. As once again, Almira trying to get the job done here. Puck is dropped. One back to the sideboards, Gaeta, trying to chip that one down further, back towards Gaeta, but it gets by him and back out to the blue line. Dabari quickly passing across, into the zone, somehow staying on side was Dabari. Watertown turns that puck back around, flipped off, Newman battling for it, but Godbell puts it down below the goal line. Therefore, Pozar back up the boards. Dabari, stick handling through, turning it around, looking for help. Dabari still there, poke checked at and sent back to the neutral zone. 3-1 Watertown as Godbow looking off the boards. Off of the linesman, Newman comes up with the puck. Passed across into the zone. Parker shot over the top of the net. Parker right back forward again. It bounces back to Newman now. Newman dumps it down low. Gaeta lets it go. Brett Parker is there. Parker turns it around, looking for some help out front. Parker turns again, back down low to Newman. Trevor Newman loses it as he's tied up as Gaeta shoves that puck down deeper. Trying to play it back out. Parker with it, he turns and looks, fires it through. Puck comes loose and back to the point. Gamzatov gets it out of the zone and Powell has to turn and chase. Powell tied up with Gamzatov and comes up with the puck. Powell looking up ice, fires it along. Parker tried to leave it there for Newman, now he'll turn back behind to Powell. 11.27 to go here in the period. Sent back ahead, Gaeta couldn't touch but no icing on the play either, so back behind it goes. Trying to move it out quickly, Watertown. Trying to hustle this puck back up. It's Mercurio with it again. Mercurio into the zone, cuts wide, looking towards the net mouth and sends it in front. He was looking for Tate Leeson, picked up by Jusso. Dustin Jusso fires that one once he gains the red line and gets it ahead. But again, Graysby goes back to get it. Graysby pinned to the boards. Jusso comes back around. Jusso still with it. 
Pern's back around and he's pinned to the boards. Trying to move it along. Jusso still being harassed down low as that puck's moved back up to Tate Leeson. Leeson fires it across. Back into the zone, it's Trevor Lord. Lord towards the front, turns, fires it across, shot, kick, save. As Sammy Bernard comes up big again. Back behind, Jusso passes it back to his defense. Looking up the ice, fired ahead, Jusso knocks it down. Jusso turns around, taking his time. Looking, passing ahead, it's Cody Rogers. Rogers into the zone wide. Rogers looking for help. Marker was there, couldn't get it to him. Back behind, back down low, looking for Marker, but Jusso has it taken away from him. The Wolves kick it back around the blue line, trying to move it out quickly. Into the offensive zone they come, thrown towards Sammy Bernard, who blockers that one aside. Back down low and behind the net. Left off there, but nobody there to get it. Now PB chases it down, sends it ahead to Elijah Wilson. Oh, Elijah Wilson tried to put it on Dumas' stick, and now the River Sharks really have to slow things down. Back behind to Rogers. Rogers flips it ahead, goes all the way down, in towards the net, no icing. Godbout will get it. Quick change here for Almira. Back behind for Hemming. Hemming fires it through the neutral zone. Quick stop up there by Kyle Powell. Powell ahead. Stephen Klink chasing. Klink trying to get back there. Worked up the sideboards. And again, Watertown looking. Throw that puck ahead. And again, Thornton with a chance. Lifted stick and can't get the shot off. Thornton goes down. Powell there for it. Moves it along the sideboards. Right back out, but back onto a Watertown stick. Powell will chase. Powell pitchforks that one back along. Right back down low as Powell has to chase again. Powell being held off, and again it's swatted away. Picked up, taken away into the corner, and now some trouble there for Pozar, who was a little bit hobbled on that play. Sent back out, chasing after it goes Clink. Clink tries to lift the stick and can't. Fired back out to center ice, it's knocked back down. Played ahead, it's Gamzatov into the zone, drops one there for Pavlov. Pavlov looking for a lane towards the front, broken up. Davidson chasing it down, that's popped right up in the air. Some trouble there for Watertown. It's picked off, and now Stephen Klink and Davidson hustling out. Dumped back in by Klink, and they'll make a change. 8.42 to go here in period two. Watertown looks up ice. Fired along, off of the linesman. Picked up by Gaeta, thrown ahead, and nobody there to pick it up. Out the other way, Gamzatov with it. Hustles in. Gamzatov forced wide. That puck bounces around. Pavlov there for it. Pavlov throws it towards the front, picked off by Gaeta. Trying to get free. Gaeta still tied up. And that'll be dumped all the way back in. Back behind. Trying to play it ahead. It's out to the neutral zone. Gingrich has it taken away by Newman. Newman turns it around. 8.08 to go here in period two. Taken away there. Mercurio sends it ahead into the zone. Comes Tate Leeson. Leeson looking towards the front. Broken up and back the other way it'll go. Brett Parker ahead. Trying to get around Graysby. Parker gets in there. Takes it to the back. Big hit there on Parker who's running to the boards hard. Dumped down low again, Graysby, harassed by Gaeta. Flipped ahead for Watertown, 7.45 to go. 3-1 Wolves, passed across for Mercurio. Mercurio looking for a lane, fire save, Sammy Bernard. And that puck goes to the sideboards. Tate Leeson will pick it up. Poke checked away from Leeson, back down low. Trying to get around the man was Peavy. Peavy fires it ahead to Newman. Newman looks up ice, banked off the boards and back to the neutral zone. Trying to knock it down was Ryan Marker. It's in between his skates. Hemming will push it forward and some trouble there. Turning it around, Peavy chasing after it, can't get to it, moved back along, Lord gets knocked off, or excuse me, that was Jacob Black, my apologies. The seven and the one on those Wolves jerseys look fairly similar. Fired ahead, Ryan Marker moves it up and into the offensive zone. Marker taking it back below the goal line, it's wrapped around the boards, quick changes here for Almira. Trying to swat it back out. Banked ahead, Thornton into the zone. Thornton dumps that one around the boards. Back behind, Pavlov trying to control. It's knocked back down by Almira. Looking up ice, it's flipped back to center as Godbout turns to chase. No icing. Godbout back for it. Elijah Wilson chasing. Almira making quick changes here. Period of the long change. Picked off there by Dustin Jusso. Jusso with it. Looking back towards the point. Keeps the zone. Fires off for Kyle Powell. Powell towards the net and a save. Puck comes loose into the corner. And again, Almira will get there. The River Sharks turn. Wilson banked off the boards. Jusso, back towards Kyle Powell, moves it to the sideboards. Steven Klink there for it. Klink throws it towards the net, and that's saved. And that'll be covered up, 6.15 to go here. 3-1 Wolves, as that was a long period of time without any stoppage. We'll be back after this. The Celtic game is to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. 
Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights World Champion Dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU account. My apologies, folks, as that one came back a little quicker than expected as the Wolves take possession back behind their own net. 6.07 left to go here in the second period. 3-1 to one in favor of the Watertown Wolves. Tate Leeson hustling in. He cuts wide. Shot. Saved by Sammy Bernard, picked off again and banked off the boards right back to the blue line. Able to keep it for a second, but Darius Davidson breaks it out. Davidson dumping that one over the top of the net. Now chasing down, trying to get his own rebound as that one's back behind, trying to move it along. It's again Dumas sending that around. Davidson works it up the sideboards. Mercurio is there for it. Two Wolves breaking that one off. Knocked back down. Excellent play there by Stephen Klink. Klink with a shot deflected towards the front of the net. Worked back out, and Stephen Klink going to get it right back. Clink, backhanded play, but couldn't get it anywhere he wanted it to go. Graysby back to play. Graysby harassed by Clink. Clink comes away with a puck. Clink to a knee, still trying to work it, taken down behind. Clink's going to earn himself a power play advantage here. Back to Pozar. Pozar looking back. Has a man sent forward, trying to play it off with Clink. Not going to be, or excuse me, Gaeta not able to get there. And Mercurio will touch up. So Pozar. Asking why Leeson coming at him. But power play opportunity now for Elmira. A chance to get this one a little bit closer as Graysby takes a seat. Power play chance for Elmira. 5-11 to go in period two. Would be a huge opportunity if they could put one home. The River Sharks. Back down in the offensive zone. Quick changes here. Head coach Tyler Jurich. Going to go with Powell, Newman, Klink, Davidson, and Gesso. Powell and Gesso switch sides. Long look here. Puck is one back. Gesso trying to move it ahead. It's poke check back. Davidson can't put it through Jacob Black. And now two on one. The Wolves hustle out. Davidson trying to get back again. Pass across. Save. Sammy Bernard coming up big again. And again, Watertown has had the better of the opportunities despite being short a man. Thornton turns it around. He's harassed right back down low as Sammy Bernard puts his stick out to avoid the problems. Back down low. Thornton turning it around again. Working the offensive zone. Shot save. Sammy Bernard picked up. And now the River Sharks hustling it back the other way. Gesso into the offensive zone. Turns it around. Poke checked away from him. He takes it down below the goal line. Swatted away from him again. Klink will get there. Steven Klink towards the middle but can't get that puck to settle down. Lifted sticks, but again, Tate Leeson comes out with it. Leeson falls down. Trying to poke check it back along. Leeson still comes away with the puck. Dumped all the way back. Bernard back to play. A minute five to go. As again, back behind. Davidson having words with Leeson. Flip back ahead. Gesso turning around. Leeson asking for a change. Trying to flip it up quickly. It's picked off there by Mike Mercurio. Mercurio into the offensive zone. Turning around, thrown off of Stephen Klink. He'll go back, poke checking that one back to Kyle Powell. The River Sharks need something offensive here. 40 seconds to go on the man advantage. Powell sends ahead. Stephen Klink hustling out of the zone over the red line, breaking in offensively. Klink throws it towards the net. Save there, covered up. And Bouchard, not much of a challenge as that'll take us to the media timeout. 3.41 to go. 30 seconds of power play time left. We'll be back after this. 
Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. All right, with that, we are back. 30 seconds of power play, time to go. Elijah Wilson out here with Dumas and Gaeta. Rogers on the backside as they try to win this one back. Gaeta pinned to the boards. Everybody down here digging. Cody Rogers comes out of the scrum with it, passes across. It's Ryan Marker. Back to Cody Rogers. Rogers towards the net over the top of it, bounces towards the front. And again, can't get it. Rogers comes back up with it. Back to Marker. Marker looking. Passed across off a of skate, and Cody Rogers has tags at the zone. Nine seconds to go. Best opportunity, the power play right there. Marker back to get it. Ryan Marker turning it around. Tomasi looking for a line change as he'll hustle up right through the neutral zone, trying to play it through. It's swatted away from him, but Cody Rogers comes up with it. Rogers moves it ahead. Five on two for the River Shark. Shot saved. Turned around again. Back. Elijah Wilson able to keep it for a moment, but now nobody back as Thornton. Gets ahead, Thornton again in, shot over the top of the net. And he has done that a time or four tonight as that puck pushed back ahead, trying to move it out. Elmira with some trouble as that puck's pushed back in offsides. Thornton back to his bench, swatted back to the neutral zone. Marker pushing it along and again right back onto Gingrich's stick. Zergeev throws it back to the neutral zone. Elijah Wilson turning and looking. Wilson looks up ice, turns around instead. Two and a half to go in the period. 3-1 Watertown, banked off the boards. Wilson picks it back up, trying to get around to Bari. Does, gets in onside. Wilson takes a rough ride into the boards. Gingrich is there, trying to move it along. Elmira can't come up with the puck, back down into the corner, as again, trying to turn it around is Dabari. Dabari, firing it ahead. Watertown trying to enter the zone quickly. It's Tate Leeson again. Leeson fires it towards the net, goes just wide. Nobody there, Brett Parker has to keep an eye on it. Hemming sends that puck wide. Back down, Tabari was chasing, back to the point instead, as Godbout has his pass knocked down, picked off by Elmira, and back out to the neutral zone. Marquise grant Mentis trying to chase it back down with a minute 50 to go. Hemming swats it around to his defensive partner. Watertown hustling to get out of the zone now, quickly back up to Tate Leeson. Leeson to the sideboards, hustling through, looking, passing it through in front, Hemming with a shot taken away. Elmira will turn it out the other way. Trying to push it off and moved ahead by Newman. Swatted back again, picked off and again dumped back in the zone that time as Parker hangs out in the neutral zone. A minute 20 left to go. Marquise Grant is gonna come up with it. Threw some legs towards the front, towards the front, a shot, can't get it off as Newman chops that puck down. Again back to Grant Mentis. Grant Mentis towards the front, shot, goal! Brett Parker! A minute 10 to go, Grant Mentis spotted his man and Parker buried it. A beauty of a goal, and Parker wasted no time. We'll see it on the replay again here. Gramentis has it towards the front, right out to Parker, and an easy goal as Bouchard was not getting post to post on that one. So a minute 10 to go here in the third or in the second period. My apologies. A three to two lead for the Watertown Wolves. Dumas sends that puck to the sideboards. Gingrich will get there. Poke checked along. Davidson with it. In his skate still, passed across, into the zone, Clink. Clink has it swatted away from him, gets it right back. Fire towards the net as Davidson couldn't get there. Back out to the point. Pozar backhands it. As again, some trouble. Moved back ahead, it's Thornton. Thornton into the zone. Swatted away by Stephen Clink. Thornton into the corner. Taken away by Clink again, kicked ahead. 
Stephen Kling trying to get around. That one deflected back in by Watertown. Darius Davidson going to get there. Has it shot. Saved by the goaltender Eloy Bouchard. Flipped out right out of the play area. 35.6 seconds to go. It's a power play, Almira. Automatic call. As Graysby goes back to the sin bin. 35.6 seconds to go. And now Almira, a great chance here. As it is a power play opportunity for the River Sharks. We'll see what head coach Tyler Jurich wants to do. Looks like Marker coming out with Jusso. Clink, Newman, and looks like Powell back out here as well. So power play for 35.6 seconds, hopefully they can take advantage right here and tie this game up. Steven Klink waiting. Puck is dropped, Klink does win it back, just so. Takes it at the hash marks, looking towards the front of the net. Sends back to Powell at the point. Powell has it, dishes it off to Marker. Ryan Marker across, finds Steven Klink. Klink back to Marker. Marker taking his time, down to Klink again. Klink looking for a lane, back to Ryan Marker. Marker back to Klink. Klink looking for a lane and can't find it. 15 seconds remaining in the period. Klink turning, waiting, shooting, deflected towards the front and can't get it to go. Newman was right there. Back behind, Powell gets it back again. Towards the point, five seconds to go. Four seconds, three, deflected just wide. Jesso with it, turns and runs out of time. So two periods of play in the books. A power play to start the third, a minute 25 to go in that, as Elmira has it back to within a goal. Just so had the first for the River Sharks, but a quick Trevor Lord goal negated that. And then, again, the Wolves have continued to feast here tonight. They continue to take liberties and find ways to put pucks in the back of the net as they have three big goals here after the Jusso, or excuse me, Tomasi had the goal at 516. Then it was Jusso, then Trevor Lord shrinking it back to a two goal lead for Watertown. And then Brett Parker with that beauty, a minute 10 seconds to go in the period. Almira just continuing to do battle. Have to find ways to come away with goals. Have to find ways to come away with points. Gonna have to have a huge third period as the River Sharks go to the room trailing by one it's three to two in favor of the Watertown Wolves still a lot of time to go 20 minutes on the board and it'll be the final period of regulation here on Hockey for All Night again want to thank you all for joining us we will be back after this plenty more to go you're listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube top of the circle waiting shooting goal is back. Your Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office 607-734-BUCK. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song. Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights world champion dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. 
trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin. And potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, we're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. To continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, first period in the books down here with Ryan Magic Marker. Ryan, first off, welcome back to Elmira. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm, it's like my second home, so I love being back. Now, Ryan, the last time you were here and I was here at the same time, big three-game weekend, uh, seven-point weekend for you as well as you came out big against the Carolina Thunderbirds and clinched the enforcers a spot in the uh, championship series for the prestigious Ignite Cup, uh, obviously the playoff situation was what it was. COVID spread all around. Um, but when you were here playing those games, I mean, how big of a deal was that for you and obviously making your return here tonight after three games last year with the Mammoth as well? Oh, it's it's huge being back. Um, you know, I love being in Elmira. Anytime I ever get to play here, I make my way down. And I get here. I have a lot of friends on the team, a lot of friendships, obviously, outside of hockey in Elmira. So it's always good to be here. This building is kind of, uh, you know, special here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. It was one of the first bigger arenas that really came in. Um, what's it been like playing here? I mean, you played both sides of the benches here. What's it like to play on both sides? So when you're against Elmira, it's it's rough. You know, the fans hackle you. You know, they, they you know, they really, you know, let you know that you're here. But when you're um, when you're on Elmira, when you're on their side, and then they make you feel at home. You know. Everyone in the community, you know, talks to you, and it's it's a great atmosphere. 
Now, obviously, some fans were talking online. They talked about kind of your uh, your move into retirement. But uh, for, as I understand it, you've been fairly busy over in Europe on the roller uh, roller hockey circuit, doing some things locally. What's it uh, What's it been like for you since uh, since you've been off from the uh, the FPHL? So um so. Right where I'm from, um, my um, one of my best friends owns um, a roller hockey rink, and I've been playing there since I was four years old, and that's kind of what I grew up doing even before ice hockey. So that's kind of like I call it like my first true love of like the, the game of hockey. So I um, I run clinics every week. I I play in actually a pro league for roller hockey, and I play Team USA like three or four times. So I got to go around the world and like see a bunch of different spots. So it's I mean it's definitely been treating me well, but now I have um. Now I have a baby coming in May, so life's going to change even more. Well, congratulations on that. Obviously, a huge step in uh, working towards the family, man. So we'll have to find a new nickname for you. Uh, Magic might have to go to the wayside, and we'll find some family-oriented. Um, but as you come in here, and obviously uh, fans won't see any drop-off there in the uh, the cardio, based on what you're telling me about the amount of time you're spending working on the ice, who are you working with? I mean, you talked about kind of camps. Is it younger kids, or who do you work with? So I work with... Primarily U16, U18. Because I'm, that's who I coach. So I actually, um, there's this tournament series called State Wars, and like all, every state like gathers like the best players from the state, and I actually coach the U16 and the U18 team. So that's the team I help, I help pick and coach in the summer and stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty much what I do with that. Nice. And now, obviously, you're coming in here against a team, Watertown, just below us in the standings. This is a, a big matchup for you, but obviously, you're used to playing in some of those. Um, and obviously, Watertown, a crest you wore for a number of years as well. Uh, what's uh, what's it like to come back here? I was playing in Elmira, but especially against a team that, again, you wore that crest on your chest. Um, it's great. It's you know, it's great, obviously, playing for Elmira and then playing against Watertown, knowing the history I have with them and how long I played with them. I mean, the lineup's completely different, obviously, from when I played. But, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, be a part of a game where two teams that I played for in the past are, you know, participating. Well, last question before I let you go. Tyler Jurich behind the bench, somebody you've uh, played against a certain... All right, folks, sorry about that. We'll get back to the Ryan Marker interview that you guys heard in the first intermission. Uh, then, of course, we'll send it down, talk with Frankie McClendon a little bit. But uh, just going through these dash auctions before they put me up here on the big screen, I got to tell you, two of them are already closed. And what a time. Love that as uh, we were just checking out the dash auctions over here on the broadcast here on the YouTube and Mixler stream. If you don't have the opportunity to join us here in the arena, Make sure to check out YouTube, absolutely free, and Mixler Internet Radio, also absolutely free for any games you're going to miss, home or on the road. Uh, love to have you join us. But again, two auctions are already closed. The next one closing in about 12 minutes as the Dash auctions continue to roll on. Make sure to take home one of these beautiful jerseys and get it here after the game as well. If you want to live bid some great players, 105, make sure to head there right after the game. Of course, after a period of play, it was down one nothing. After two periods of play, still down by just a goal, three to two, each side scoring a pair in that second frame. Shots on goal, Almira pumped it up there a little bit at the end, a rough start to the second period, but 15 shots on goal for the River Sharks, 11 for the Watertown Wolves. A third power play opportunity for Elmira there late in the period. They're going to start the period on a power play. Still over a minute to go. Fresh, clean ice and a great opportunity for Elmira to get themselves back in this game. Penalty kill, perfect on both sides. Save percentage favoring Eloy Bouchard over there for the Watertown Wolves as the River Sharks have to find a way to get some more pucks past him. Some great work there. Dustin Jusso coming up with the first goal for the River Sharks. And a beautiful pass from Marquise Grant Mentis to find Brett Parker, who hammered that puck home. Thought it might go through the net the way that Parker fired that one. Quick look around the out-of-town scoreboard as we check on another busy night here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. The Blue Ridge Bobcats trailing Motor City 3-2 there in the second period. Port Huron trailing Danbury 1-0 in the first period of play. And, of course, we're rooting for uh, Port Huron on that one as hopefully an opportunity to catch those hat tricks. Final game in the FPHL tonight. Carolina Baton Rouge yet to get underway. 6.07 start here. Uh, didn't really favor getting Carolina Baton Rouge underway. They're going to get underway in about 10 minutes. Again, here tonight, a huge game for the River Sharks. A chance to go 13 points up on the Wolves. If they can come back and complete this comeback, 
A regulation victory gives the River Sharks three big points and will put them 13 points ahead of the Watertown Wolves. As you see on the standings board up there, 49 to 39 right now. Some extra incentive for the boys in the dressing room. And don't forget, we are right back here coming up on Friday night against the Binghamton Black Bears, a team that we played very, very tough last night. A great game as Binghamton will come back to town. And again, a 7.05 p.m. start right here on Friday night. Don't want to miss a minute of the River Sharks action as they chase down the playoffs. Get your tickets on Ticketmaster.com, the Ticketmaster app, or by calling the box office 607-734-PUCK. As we keep things going here, we'll send it right back down to Ryan Marker, and then we'll talk to Frankie McClendon a bit before the guys take back to the ice. A number of times over the course of your career, and obviously teammates when you're here with the enforcers, uh, what, uh, what is it like kind of seeing the next generation kind of moving on. Tyler Jurich, obviously behind the bench. You're moving into a coaching role in your roller hockey side of things. Uh, what's it like to kind of see the torch being passed, if you will? Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. Like I was talking to Jurich about this yesterday about how like I was looking at the league and stuff like that and how crazy different every team's lineup is compared to when we played. And it's like you know I'm used to going on there and being like oh you know look who's you know doing well you know. I barely know anybody anymore, so it's like it's completely different than what I'm used to. But it's cool, though. You know, it's we're in our well thirties to mid, you know, between middle thirties. So it's it's cool seeing the new um the new kids coming up, and I'm looking forward to playing against some of them tonight. Well, I lied. I didn't. I'm gonna ask one more question. I said that was the last one, but mm -hmm. we'll give you this one more. Rasmus Asp has become kind of a fan favorite here. You got the chance to see him down there in Delaware. Uh, what is it about his game that has made him such an integral part of this uh, Elmira River Shark lineup? Honestly, he's just he's unbelievable all all, all around. He's a great all around player, and not only just that, he's a great person too, which means even more. So he's the team loves him. He's great to have in the locker room, and he's going to be a good player for a long time. Love to hear it. All right, well, have fun tonight. Thank you, and welcome back, Ryan Magic Marker. We'll be back on the intermission report. Thank you. Frankie McClendon, well, welcome into Coach's Show and welcome into Elmira. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, and obviously not a place you're unfamiliar with. Uh, I was talking to uh, Tyler about it a little bit earlier. You've celebrated a championship on First Arena Ice, uh, much to the chagrin of some of us here, including myself. With and touches on, remember that. I do remember that. You and I had a little talk before that game, as I recall. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, again, so now you're here wearing an Elmira uniform. Uh, what was it that was enticing about coming to Elmira and, and really playing for Tyler Jurich here? Well, you know, it's a good organization. Like, Jurich has been around for a long time. We played against each other. He scored on me a lot. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, like, it's a good young team here. They're in a great opposition, you know, like, to bring me in. It's, it's really, it's a great opportunity. You know, uh, like, I can give off a little knowledge to these young guys and, like, how it is going down the stretch. It's going to be very competitive to get into the playoffs, you know, so... Well, you talk about it, young guys. We've talked all about it this season. This is a very young team. It's a very, you know, new group of guys that are coming together for the first time. So what can you impart to those guys? So obviously, uh, it's a long run through the playoffs, and to be perfectly frank, our playoffs started about Super Bowl time. So getting into that mindset now, what, do you, what are you looking to impart to some of those younger guys here? Well, the biggest thing is, is, like, we have to control our own emotions, but we can only control the things that we know what's best to do and that's things on the ice. And it's, it's going to take a long road, but like we have to be focused in practice and not have to practice and getting into the games on the stretch. And, you know, I think that's something I've been able to deal with in the last couple of years. You know, I've been on two championship teams. Um, you know, I can just install that to like the younger guys and try to show them the most about like how we need to get to more practice. Like we have a great coach here in Jerich. So uh, hopefully I can install that in them and then what they can like get the offer them into games on the stretch. For sure, and knowing obviously we're coming up against a Danbury team that obviously you know fairly well uh, across the ice, but when you head into the Danbury arena, obviously there's, there's just some something different. It's a little more of a hostile environment. Uh, what are you hoping to uh, to help impart here for for the guys going in there? You know, I think down the stretch, every rink's going to be a hostile environment, but Danbury has been played there for three years. It's very loud, very passionate fans. I know there's passionate fans here in Elmira, and I think I think they're going to make the trip down there to Danbury this week. It's the sound of it. Um, but, you know, like, I'm just going to tell the guys, you know, we just have to control what we do on the ice, not worry about, like, the fans. We can't think about the outcome of the game. We just got to focus and uh, do a job and get six points out of this week. 
speak, speaking of that, obviously closing in on Danbury as well, they're right above you in the standings, a chance to uh, to close the gap a little bit. When you come in and see that, obviously goaltenders see the game a little bit differently. I've been fortunate enough to work with a bunch of different ones. Uh, what do you guys try to do as far as you and Sammy collectively as a unit trying to uh, scout, trying to help each other out? I mean, obviously the goaltending duo is a lot different than a forward or defenseman, uh, the way you guys work together over the course of a season. Right, well, as goaltenders, we see the entire ice, so it's like I just try to tell the guys, like, there's certain areas where we can get into lanes, shoot, or we can expose a team on their board side. Uh, th those are the things we're going to try to do, but, you know, as goaltenders, my job is to just simply stop them up, and that's, that's a job I need to continue to do. I've had a great season so far this year, so hopefully I can just keep that momentum going. And, you know, just to help Sammy out, like, I, he's, he's been a great guy so far ever since I came in. You know, he's the backbone of this team so far. You know, my job is just to come in and, like, on the days that he needs a rest, like, do my job, get a win for the team, give him a rest. And speaking of which, all right, so a big, big moment here in the third period. And again, thank you to Frankie McClendon for joining us there on the intermission report. And again, another big thank you to Ryan Marker, who making his presence felt here tonight. You'd love to see him find the back of the net. But Eloy Bouchard takes his spot back down to the left-hand side. The River Sharks and Sammy Bernard down to my right. The River Sharks in those black hockey for all jerseys. Again, you love to see that. As again, Almira against the Watertown Wolves. Five on four hockey for the next minute, 25. The line's been quickly over to the Zamboni Tunnel. Not sure what the, uh, the needs are. It looks like it might be a little wet out there still. I assume that's what that has to do with, but not 100% sure as one Zamboni door is open. Powell having a chat with the official. Both goalies appear semi-ready. The ring crew all having words with the linesman there. Now both referees heading down. One official down to talk with Sammy Bernard. The other referee over to the tunnel having a quick discussion. And there you hear the first arena trying to get loud. So the official going over and explaining something to the River Shark bench. Oh, it appears that maybe there was a tear in the net. So ideally, if you're the River Sharks, you don't want to give Watertown any opportunity there to find the back of the net. Now the other linesman working on something back out towards center ice right in front of that River Shark bench. So 20 minutes on the clock, shots on goal 23 to 21 in favor of the Watertown Wolves. The netting appears to be fixed. The center ice area still being worked on. A minute 25 of power play time remaining as the Elmira River Sharks, in need of a goal, need to find themselves a way back into this game. They trail by a goal as they have pretty much since the beginning. First goal scored by the Watertown Wolves was back in the first period, just 3.57 in. So now, a appear set to go. As head coach Tyler Jurich sending Gesso, Marker, Powell, Klink. Pozar's on the ice, but... We'll see what they're gonna do here. I would assume Newman would be the final man back over the boards. Excuse me, that is Newman, my apologies. From this angle, looked a little bit like. As now, coming back onto the bench as well. Not sure what was going on there was Brett Parker. So good look at the River Shark bench. Still, 
devoid of Rasmus Asp. A big piece of this River Sharks defensive unit as now Almira has to find a way to get going. Klink going to lose that draw back, but Ryan Marker gets possession of the puck. He turns, sends it back behind. Trying to swat that puck down and swat it back behind, but Leeson comes up with it. Taken away from him and now trying to hustle out the other way. It's taken back by Jusso. Jusso with possession, trying to hustle it past. Sends it up, can't get it past Leeson. Jusso throws it across, he finds Kyle Powell. Powell back to the neutral zone, firing that one ahead. Steven Klink into the zone, but again, some trouble controlling. Mike Mercurio comes away with it and sends it all the way back down. 50 seconds to go in the man advantage as Leeson and Powell come together again, not the first time, and Leeson Bobbing, his hel bobbing himself all over the place. Breaking into the zone is Ryan Marker. Wraps it around the boards. Steven Klink watches it come to him. Gets it back to Powell. Passed across for Jusso. Jusso looking towards the net. Deflected off a leg and into the netting. So, offensive zone draw with 32 seconds to go in the power play. 19.07 to go here in the third period. So, quick look here as the River Sharks need a goal. Newman loses that one. Marker trying to chase it back. It's back to the point. Powell able to keep it. Moves it back down low. That ice looking a little bit slick. Back again to Powell. Powell looking. Back down low. He finds his man, but can't find a lane to shoot. Back to Kyle Powell at the point. Down low shot and can't get it to go. Jesso with a one-timer and a perfect rip. Back to the point with 10 seconds. Clink back down low again. Trying to move this along. Jesso with it. Looking towards the net, fires it along, Powell off a leg, bounces around back to the point, kept there by Klink, and the power play is officially over. Back to the point again, Powell passes across, Klink shot, goes just wide. Chasing for it, and it's moved back out, quickly back through center ice, chopping at it as Thornton goes tripping himself over Powell. That was an interesting little set play there, as back out the other way, Stephen Klink trying to use his motor. Gets into the zone, gets around Graysby. Clink still trying to work it, has it in his skates, but taken away there at time by Watertown. Trying to play it off, Jusso comes up with it. Jusso passed across, kept in the zone. Clink looking, got it towards the front and can't get it. Bouncing back out, Watertown trying to take possession, flip back ahead to Dabari. Dabari and Gamzatov into the zone for Watertown. Dropped off there for Gamzatov, looking, shooting, save, Sammy Bernard. 17.53 to go here in period number three. Shots on goal within two. As the faceoff coming to the right hand side of Sammy Bernard. Bernard waiting. As the faceoff coming to his right hand side. Parker gonna lose that draw, turned around. Gamzatov shoved into the boards hard. Again, trying to work that puck down low. Gamzatov digging for it, it comes back out. Marquise Grant Mentis comes away with it. Grant Mentis out towards center ice, gets over the red line and dumps that puck in. Takes a little bit of a stick from Gingrich, and now it's moved back ahead by Watertown. The Wolves back out to center ice. Picked off there and sent up the sideboards. Gaeta trying to calm it down and couldn't cull it. Back out to center ice it goes. Back to play with Pozar. Banked that off of Pavlov, and it'll be turned back around again. Peavy up to Gaeta. Gaeta turns and looks. Gaeta, a little drop pass there for Marquise Grant Mentis. Gaeta goes down right at his own blue line. Grant Mentis into the zone. Still trying to force his way through. Dumps that off, looking for Brett Parker. Parker trying to chase it back down. Can't come up with it. Kept in the zone and dumped back down low. Gaeta on the chase. Back off the boards and back towards center ice. That'll be played down there by Powell. Played out and moved back ahead as Dabari will play. Chase Dabari, turning it around. Again, another former Elmira alum. Moved back ahead and dumped back in. Powell chasing. Didn't make contact, so no high stick, as that's what the official was signifying down there. 16.45 to go, third period. Still, the Sharks trail by one. Powell, back for it, has it. Back below the goal line, firing it ahead. Almeyer trying to get it back out to the neutral zone. Klink turns to chase, but he is going to be cut off by Godbout, and that will be an icing. 16.32 to go, period number three. As congratulations, Elmira College Women's Hockey winning the NEHC championship. Big congratulations to those Elmira College women's hockey players. Face off off to the right hand side of Sammy Bernard. As Dumas waits, wins that puck back. Sent back and that will go all the way down right in on Eloy Bouchard, so no icing. 
Bouchard trying to hurry that up to Sergeev. Sergeev sends it back to his defensive partner. A weird little hop there off the boards. Coming right back to center ice where Mercurio moves it ahead for Tate Leeson. Leeson, back, shot, save, Sammy Bernard. The difference from this in a, about a week ago at this point, Leeson felt a lot more pressure and a lot more bodies on him back on Sunday night. So face off to the right hand side of Sammy Bernard. Puck drop coming here to Sammy's right hand side is pushed back, Watertown has it. Turning around, shot by Tomasi into the corner. Chasing after it, Pozar trying to move it along quickly. Almira gets there, banks it off the boards and gets it back to center ice. Trying to push it back out, but it's picked off and now Peavy turns it around. Pozar with it again. Clink touches, but couldn't control the puck. Back again, trying to play it out. Watertown in their own zone. Graysby sends it across. Back out to the neutral zone off of Jacob Black. Move back ahead. Clink flips it ahead, but can't get it to Dumas. Move back in the other way. Black comes in onside. Turned away. Back to the blue line and back out to center. Dump back in by Thornton. Back behind. Bernard leaves it there. Set up. Pozar. I'm going to play it out. 15.30 left to go in the third period. Wolves up by one. As the River Sharks trying to find the equalizer. Bank back to center ice was looking for Clink, but it's dumped right back in, and Bernard will let it go. Watertown really protecting that neutral zone. Flipped back ahead, trying to play it off. It's taken away. The Wolves back in with it, a shot over the top of the net. Banked around the boards, and Sergeev will get it back. Sergeev throws it towards the net, deflected just wide. As now again, Amira sitting back a little bit. Back towards the point, shot goes just wide. Pozar trying to get there and can't. Nobody there for it for Almira. Shot again, deflected into the corner. Off a man, back behind, turning it around is Gisso. Swatted away from him now. Peavy back to play, Peavy turns. Backhands that up the boards. Trying to move it along, it's banked off and played out of the zone by Elijah Wilson. Turned right back around as Watertown enters the zone three on two. Now one man gets back towards the front, save Sammy Bernard in the back of the net. And with 14.33, Elmira's not gonna be happy about that one. So right through the handshake line goes Gamzatov. And some conversation here with the two officials as I think they try to get it figured out. Who put that puck in? Actually, we might be getting a look at this one. So I think they are going to review this. As we'll see. So the look at this one. We'll get a look at that for you on the screen right above here. Powell waiting. As I'm fairly certain Elmira would have said something there to trigger this. They wait a long look. 14.33 left to go. Watertown up by a pair right now. As now they'll cover up the board and we'll get a look to see what the replay would have been. Waiting for it to come across on our screen here. So 14.33 to go. We'll wait and see the replay that the officials are going to look at. Merkel back behind the bench now as well, out of uniform. So they show this, but I don't think that's enough to see what they're trying to see here. They're going to ask for a little bit more than that, I believe. So now here's the replay. Back behind, as again, still the officials having the conversation as they show the replay yet again. As they nod, waiting on the official call here, and I believe it's going to come from the referee in the box right now. He comes out and calls it a good goal. So Watertown gets the call. And now it's a 4-2 game, and Elmira's got a light of fire here. So, puck drop back at center ice. Parker trying to tie up his man, does, but nobody there to get the puck. Back behind, it's Graysby. Graysby looking up ice. Off the leg of Newman. Newman trying to get ahead, but he's tied up. Newman trying to push, but can't get it ahead. And now Watertown trying to turn it back around. Gaeta there, dumps that puck in, and Newman being hooked by Tate Leeson there. 
As that puck's dumped back off, back behind. Trying to play it up is Gingrich. Gingrich off the boards, up for Leeson. Tate Leeson, who's been taking liberties all night, back into the zone. Mercurio with a little wraparound attempt. Has to scour the zone as it's turned back around. Picked off here by Elmira. Cody Rogers trying to get free. Sends that puck ahead, and he'll send it all the way down. That's going to go for icing. As that'll be touched up, and Elmira will go all the way back to their defensive zone. 13.53 to go here, period three, and we will step aside for a media timeout. River Sharks two, Watertown four. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Your Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena on Friday, March 8th, to take on the Binghamton Black Bears. Join the River Sharks as they chase down the playoffs, looking to keep their lead on the Watertown Wolves. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster or by calling the box office, 607-734-BUCK. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. The Celtic Angels enable their audiences to experience the real Ireland, celebrating their cherished heritage through Irish song, Five beautiful women with glorious harmonies make up the Celtic Angels. The Celtic Knights World Champion Dancers leave audiences breathless. And the Trinity Band Ensemble with flawless interpretations of authentic Irish music. Join us for award-winning song, dance, and music as the Celtic Angels carry you to Ireland on wings of music. Don't miss this spectacular performance live at the First Arena on March 9th. Tickets are just $25 at the box office or at firstarena.net. All right, with that, we are back. River Sharks trapped in their own zone after a media timeout, 13.53 to go. Four to two Wolves right now. As Almira has to find a way to get something going here. Puck is dropped. Wolves with a shot goes just wide. Newman trying to chase it back down. Puts a puck on, or excuse me, puts a stick on that puck and gets it back out. But again, Watertown immediately quick to turn it back around. Tomasi, some trouble there as that puck bounces around. Turn around and banked off the boards. Right back ahead. Dumped back in as Almira turns it around quickly. Played through some legs into the offensive zone. Broken in onside. Rogers towards the net. Again, chasing down his own rebound. Can't come up with it. Godbout has it now. Godbout up the sideboards. Racing in is Newman. Off his skates. Comes away with it. Newman turns. Throws it towards the middle. Back towards Kyle Powell who comes up with it. Trying to swat it back down and can't settle it down. Tomasi gets it right back out to Jacob Black. Black into the zone. Trying to play it wide. Turns around. Black harassed there. Puck taken away. Banked off and back to the neutral zone. Newman hustling it out. Trevor Newman sending it across for Davide Gaeta. Gaeta turning around and couldn't come up with it. Kept in the zone. Now Newman comes back up with it, turns around, and swats at it, but can't get that puck to settle down. Gamzatov in, shot, and off the, off the crossbar. Excellent work again. As uh, one more time, the River Sharks quickly back out of the zone, but need to get the offense going. Puck stopped as Almira falling down was Darius Davidson. Grasby back ahead, Davari in onside. Davari again turns it around. Harassed by Pozar, but again, that puck still flutters around. Back to the point. Shot. Goes just wide. Darius Davidson trying to chase it down and can't. Tavari comes up with it. Played off. Dumas up the boards. Davidson a little poke check, but can't clear the zone. Back. Shot. Just wide. Klink finds the puck. Steven Klink turning it around. Has it. Still trying to get loose and can. Moved down low by Gamzatov again. Towards the front. Broken up. And now Klink back to get it. Klink and Dumas trying to hustle out of the zone. Moved ahead. Dominic Dumas with it into the zone. Dumas cutting across, avoids one man, and that puck comes back to center. River Sharks will have to reset. Under 12 minutes to go. 4 to 2 Watertown. Looking up ice is Cody Rogers. Rogers turns, fires it back along. He finds PV. PV back to Cody Rogers. Rogers ahead, finds Elijah Wilson, who enters the zone. Wilson cutting through, shot! Deflected back through towards the middle, and a chop gonna draw a slash as again. Steven Klink hacked, slashed, and beaten up 
as the Watertown Wolves will go to the box. It's Tate Leeson, and no surprise there. Leeson has taken liberties all night long. And with 11.32 to go, this is a, it's not a must score, but it's getting pretty close. 11.32 remaining here in the third period. 4-2 in favor of Watertown. Jasso to take the draw. Newman, Marker up front. Powell on the backside. One back, Newman gets it to Powell. Looking across, he's got Klink. Klink gets it back. Steven Klink looking towards the net. Takes it back towards the blue line. He and Powell will swap spots. Klink with a shot, broken up, and that puck will be turned down and all the way back. Sammy Bernard way out of his crease to play it. Leaves it back there for Kyle Powell. Thornton pinching in. Certainly don't want to give up any more offensive opportunities while well, they're short-handed to the Watertown Wolves. Trying to play it through skates, couldn't get it. Dustin Gesso will. Gesso passes off, and now Powell into the offensive zone. Sends wide to Klink. Klink turning, trying to feed it back. Gets possession of the puck. Drops it there for Ryan Marker. Marker looking. Nobody in front of the net. Now Marker over to Powell. Powell right back to Marker. Marker back to Powell. Wines, fires, deflected through and into the corner. Trying to play it back. Pinching in is Dustin Gesso. Gesso trying to cut towards the front. Gesso turning. Still trouble. Back to the point. Kept there and can't play it out. Turned around the other way. Hustled back out again. Excellent play there defensively from the River Sharks. Klink is taken down and not going to like that one as there's no call coming on that. Watertown keeps the offensive zone. It's Pavlov turning around. Has to kill time. 43 seconds to go all the way back down. And again, Bernard back to play. 10.08 to go in the third period. Just 34 seconds of a power play left. Newman takes it back deep into his own zone. Passes off of the foot of Ryan Marker. Marker looks ahead. Newman makes a change. Fired up to the blue line. Played off. Trying to dipsy doodle his way through is Gesso. Taken away from him. Gesso gets around his man. Back to play. Dustin Gesso passes across to Pozar. 14 seconds to go on the man advantage. Into the zone it goes. Cut wide. Dominic Dumas turning. Trying to play it out. Dumas back behind the net. Fires it along. He was looking for Klink. Klink comes up with it. Trying to poke check it back. He comes away with it. Towards the front shot. In the back of the net. Leeson is free. I'm not sure if it was a power play goal or not. But Dustin Jessa going to bury it and make it a 4-3 hockey game. You heard the goalie stick banging right towards the front, and Jesso lets it go. Bouchard didn't have a prayer, and it's 4-3. So now Elmira trailing by one yet again. Without the help of Rasmus Asp, the referee's over to have a discussion. Not sure what the discussion is. 9.31 to go, four to three in favor of Watertown. As again, see what's going on here as the officials over to discuss things. Officials telling the agents in the penalty box something. So 9.31 to go. Shots on goal in favor of the River Sharks. Tate Leeson heading back for the penalty box at the moment. I'm not sure what that's about. So Leeson will get the conversation from the official. Dominic Dumas calling for somebody to go over and get that same explanation. So two Wolves over there arguing and now Kyle Powell will head over to have that discussion. Powell trying to get the explanation here is not sure what this might be all about, but Trevor Lord now over there. So, face off, back at center ice. Four to three, Watertown. 9.31 to go as Elmira still needs a goal. Huge. Huge 9.31 to go here. As that puck won back by Watertown. Sergei back behind. 
Swatted back to the neutral zone. Dabari having some trouble. Poke checked away. Gaeta moves it along and back in the offensive zone. Poke checked along by Dominic Dumas. Dumas turns around but has that puck taken away. Back out the other way comes the Watertown Wolves. Hustling it back ahead. Watertown in the offensive side. Throws it towards the net. Turned aside by Sammy Bernard. Back again trying to play it off was Gaeta. Could not. Dabari sends that puck wide and it's worked out here by Davidson. Darius Davidson in. Onside. Trying to send it forward. Davidson stick being held. As it's moved back aside, and Pavlov turns it ahead. Right back up the ice, Sergeev. Trying to play it out. He gets it ahead. Jesso couldn't knock it down. Now it's back. Dustin Jesso back to the defense. PV looking up ice. Letting the rest of the line get a change. Back behind. Cody Rogers up to Jesso. Jesso Gaeta into the zone with Elijah Wilson. Thrown towards the net. Turned to the side. Trying to lift a stick was Wilson. Puck moved back down low. Trying to kick it along. Wilson trying to get his foot in there. There's the puck, it's loose, and comes out to Mike Mercurio. Mercurio trying to hustle that puck out of the zone. Mike Mercurio hustles it deep, sends that puck all the way down. Mercurio gonna get his own pass. He's rubbed off, Trevor Lord out towards the front, right back, it's taken away, and now Davide Gaeta hustling it. Sends that puck wide, finds Cody Rogers, and he'll dump and go off for a line change. Keeping an eye on it, Elijah Wilson able to keep the zone for the moment. Banked it off the boards and back in deep. So full line change coming here. Ryan Marker watches. That puck comes back out to center ice where Powell takes it. Kyle Powell turning back to his defensive partner, Pozar. Pozar back out to center ice, picked off there, and Thornton has it taken away from him. Back ahead and deep in the zone. Steven Kling trying to chase it back down. That puck into the corner but couldn't control. Gingrich with it. Move back ahead for Watertown. The Wolves trying to hustle it out. It's dumped back in by Tomasi all the way around. Powell chasing, does come up with the puck. Flips it ahead for Ryan Marker. Marker heads out of the zone. Klink deflects it. He has to chase. Godbout gets in between Klink and the puck. Godbout with it. Trying to move that puck along. Pinned to the boards as they can't hustle it back out. 7-15. Watertown breaks over the blue line. Looking, shooting, save Sammy Bernard. Again, some trouble. Kyle Powell back for it. Banked it off the boards. Pozar turns and looks. Has Klink up the boards, decides better of it, sends it ahead. Klink tries to lift a stick and can. Watertown maintains the zone. Now Klink off the boards, can't get it by Dabari. Dabari and Klink doing battle. That one's sent down. That one's going to go all the way down as Klink arguing it because he's saying it was touched. And I'm not sure what's happening here. So, again, 6.53 to go. We go to the last media timeout. Well, the 10-minute media timeout. We'll be back after this. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-68 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right, River Sharks back defensively in those black jerseys, which I have to say are just beyond sharp. Love to see it. The Watertown Wolves in the usually home gradient grays. Mercurio against Marker. Marker loses that draw. Push back ahead. Lord comes up with it, flipped away, and right back to center ice. Hustled out. Clink trying to get around as Lord comes up behind him. Puck is pushed back to center, and Mike Mercurio back in the offensive zone, waiting for Leeson. Leeson trying to cut through. Mercurio will dump off, looking for Leeson. Picked back off that time, and now Elmira sends it up the sideboards. Fed ahead. Graysby keeps it there, all the way back down. Trevor Lord behind the net, trying to slap it ahead, and now Newman chasing after it as Watertown caught in a bit of a change. Three on three back the other way. Newman into the zone, looking, shooting, glove save, Bouchard as Newman and Sergeev get tied up. 6.17 to go, period number three. 
So, again, the River Sharks go back to work. See if they can get this one tied up. 6.17 to go. Have to find something offensively here. Parker to take the draw. Parker with Davidson and Dumas. Puck is dropped. Watertown wins it back, rolled around the boards. Davidson trying to chase after it. It'll come back to center ice where Peavy picks it up. Peavy passes it across, away from Tomasi. That one smacked, and Davidson will get it back to center ice. Sergeev there for it, banked off the boards, and again, Brett Parker loses possession. Dumped all the way back in. Bernard back to play. Bernard sends it off. A long look. Fired ahead, bounced up, and cannot clear the zone. Parker gets tied up. Bank back to center ice. Sergeev takes possession. Trying to hustle it along. Watertown still trying to play this puck back ahead. They dump it deep in the zone. Bernard way out of his crease to play. And now it'll be turned around again as Elmira tries to get this puck back up the ice. Parker swatted away from him. Poke checking that one. Excellent work there by Cody Rogers as he's taken off the puck. And Thornton will bring it back in the offensive zone. Poke checked away. Picked up. Moved back ahead as going down was a Watertown Wolf player grabbing at his face. Back behind, Puck trying to move it along. Cody Rogers off the boards and back to center as Gresby turns around and chases. 5-10 to go in period three. The River Sharks need something offensive here. Sent back ahead, Dabari into the zone, looking, shooting off of the leg of Pozar and again trying to force this puck out to center. Hustled out by Elijah Wilson. Wilson into the zone, he turns, backhands it in deep. Again, flipped out. Wilson couldn't keep that time. And now it'll be flipped out two on one. Mercurio and Dabari looking. Mercurio trying to find a lane towards the front. And it's covered up there. Sammy Bernard, that'll take us to the final media timeout. 4.44 to go. River Sharks trailing by a goal. We'll be back after this. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Ray at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. Ready for a financial blow-up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right. Well, Bernard will be watching the face-off here very carefully. Almira needs a face-off win. They've got to get back to the other end of the ice and start putting shots onto Bouchard. Trailing by a goal. Gesso ties his man up, gets it back to Pozar. Pozar off the boards, hustling that puck out. Can't clear the zone. It's dumped all the way around. Back to get it goes Ryan Marker. Marker turns. Firing it along, back behind. Pozar lets it go right to Mercurio towards the front. Broken up as Tate Leeson is there. Leeson harassed by Marker. Back down low towards the front, broken up again, and Gesso turns it around. Dustin Gesso circling his own zone. Drops a pass defensively. Pozar looks up ice. Pozar trying to get around Mercurio, but can. Mercurio staying right with him. Pozar up ahead to Powell, lets that one go out to center ice, but nobody in a black jersey there. Grasby right in, off of Sammy Bernard. Back to get it again. Watertown playing pretty flush along the neutral zone as Pozar dumps it in. The defenseman right back off the side of the net now, trying to get this puck out as Watertown back to the point to Powell. Powell rolls that puck all the way around. Quick change here for Marker. Gesso keeps the zone but falls down. Thornton turns it around and he will ice that puck. Not quite the distance, however, as it's turned back around. Gesso calling for it, wants that puck, gets it in the neutral zone. Passed across. Opportunity here for Elmira towards the front shot and doesn't end up in the back of the net. That is unbelievable. How did that not go in? What an unbelievable play. Netminder, I believe he lost his blade as well. 
will bring his blade back to the bench and Bouchard will have to be tended to. So. Face off coming to the left hand side of Eloy Bouchard. As we'll see what the River Sharks can do here. A long look as Bouchard still being taken care of. 3.34 to go. If the Sharks can find a way to put one past Bouchard here, that is what they need. They gotta get this to at least overtime with 3.34 to go. At some point, you gotta wonder when Sammy Bernard will head for the bench. Tyler Jurich hasn't been shy to do it before. And I'm sure if the need arises, he will do just that. At some point here, they might have to pull Bouchard and put Kozlowski in if the skate is actually damaged, which I'm starting to wonder. This is taking far too long. Most of these blades snap right back in. As the equipment manager for the Watertown Wolves, I believe finally might have it secured. All right, there we go. So now Bouchard will head back to the goal. As Almira looking for one. Dominic Dumas set to take the draw. Bouchard back in between his pipes. Dumas waits. Puck is dropped, tied up. One back, Gingrich trying to move it along. Gingrich harassed there as Klink takes him down. But again, Watertown comes away with the puck. Trying to work it back out. It's chipped off of a Sharks player, but back out the other way. Dabari turning, loses possession. It's turned right back around and Elmira will take it. Fired ahead, hustling it ahead is Klink. Steven Klink in, looking, shooting, and it's turned aside. Klink did not get all he wanted on that one. Played back out. Klink trying to play it through and can't. Puck continues to bounce as that one trying to be settled down. But again, Elmira, some trouble controlling. Davidson will slap it back in, but Klink had to get onside. Now Watertown playing pass with the defense. Chase Tabari has that deflect off a leg. Davidson into the zone. Darius Davidson towards the middle, but he can't get it to go. Back behind, big hit by Steven Klink. He comes up with a puck. Back towards the front. Loose in front and covered up as Bouchard jumps on top of it. 2.45 to go. Sammy Bernard still patrolling his crease. As Powell and Pozar back over the boards. Up front, Elijah Wilson. Coming out here with Dustin Gisseau and Trevor Newman. Gisseau waiting. Puck is dropped. Wilson chases after it and gets to it. Throws it towards the front. Gisseau, he's tied up. Tate Leeson trying to get there. It's dumped back down deep. Gisseau is there for it. Gisseau, he's rubbed off that time. Sent back down low, chasing after it. Elmira trying to get there. Goaltender still in between the pipes. Trying to move it out. Trevor Lord passes across. It's Leeson getting it deep in the zone. Lord chasing after it. Lord, poke checked away from him. Leeson going to get it cleanly. Leeson back towards the point. Shot. Easy glove save for Sammy Bernardo with 2.17 to go. The Sharks are 200 feet from where they want to be. So, face-off going to come to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. Long look here. Gisseau tied up, wins that puck back. Powell flips it ahead, gets it to the neutral zone. Godbelt back for it. Flips it again right back to the neutral zone. Dumped back in, and Sammy Bernard will settle it down. Tate Leeson just too close. So, face-off again back in the defensive zone. 2.04 to go. Two minutes, four seconds remaining as the Sharks in desperate need of a goal. 2.04 left to go. They're out shooting Watertown 33 to 31. Waiting for the puck drop. It's down. Almira gets the faceoff win, but Tate Leeson able to move that puck back down deep. Newman chasing after it, moves it along for Kyle Powell. Powell there for it. Flips that puck towards the neutral zone as Graysby sends it ahead. Knocked back down and moved out. Newman trying to get through the neutral zone, and he will. Into the zone. Passes across. Nobody there for it. Gisseau had pulled up at the blue line. Back behind. Flipped back out to the neutral zone. 
as Elijah Wilson cuts it off and comes away with it. Elijah Wilson turning it around, hustling it ahead. He and Jusso enter the zone. Elijah Wilson turning, looking for help, dumps that off for Jusso below the goal line. Jusso turns it around, looking. Back out for Kyle Powell. Powell with a shot. Turned away by the netminder. Powell swats it back down lower. Back up the boards. Newman able to keep. Newman shoots. Deflected and into the corner. Back down again. Sorting it around. Cody Rogers towards the front, but nobody can come up with it. Just oh, trying to get there. Lord wraps it around the boards, and that's going to come out of the zone. Back behind goes Rogers. A minute five to go. Netminder still in the crease. In on side. Steven Klink towards the front and taken down. Klink not going to get a call on that one. And the River Sharks definitely wanted one there. Still in his crease. Sammy Bernard, 50 seconds to go. Starting to edge towards the bench. Trying to flip it out towards the front. But again, Almira can't come up with it. Back chasing it. Davidson back out of the zone. Shot all the way down. Just missed for icing. Thornton going to get there. And it's tossed in the back of the net. The River Sharks had pulled the net minder. And with 36 seconds to go, Thornton, who has missed the net about 16 times tonight, Finally puts it into the empty cage. Thornton had the jump and was able to beat out the icing call. And Almira now trails 5-3. to three. They are going to surrender three big points here tonight. Sammy Bernard back between the pipes. As the faceoff comes here back at center. Puck is dropped, Elmira wins it back. Dumped all the way back down as they will blow it dead for icing with 31.2 seconds remaining. So Thornton gets the goal. And again, the Wolves finding a way. So, face off to the left hand side as that puck dropped. Trying to push it along. Bernard still standing as that puck worked back behind. Trying to play it off. It's thrown towards the net. Off a leg. And again, Dabari comes up with it. Chase Dabari turning. Gets that puck out of the zone. Last 15 seconds of this one as Watertown content to kill time. So the Wolves coming up big again. As that one picked up by Gaetti. Can't enter the zone. Move back. Last four, three, two, and one. That is going to do it. As Watertown comes away victorious. And the Elmira River Sharks not going to be happy. A great jubilant effort by Elmira, but just unable to get the job done. As they've got to retool now. Watertown has closed the gap to just seven. And again, just not enough for Elmira to be able to do the job. So, unfortunate for the River Sharks, but Watertown going to come away victorious. And that's just not what you were hoping to see. As the River Sharks going to fall in this one 5-3, to three, they'll salute the fans. And again, it was a valiant effort by the River Sharks. But just again, not quite enough. So a quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard as the Motor City Rockers beat the Blue Ridge Bobcats 6-2. The Danbury Hattricks tied with the Prowlers 2-2 two two after 2. And the first period just getting started, Baton Rouge and Carolina. So, again, not the way you were hoping it would go, but the River Sharks do a job as best as they can. 5-3 Wolves after this one. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We will be back live right here from the Shark Tank on... Friday night against the Binghamton Black Bears. I'm John Clement. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night, Elmira. River Sharks.